Good morning. Good morning. No, sorry, we just have a little technicality. Just bear with us for a sec. Okay, testing. Hello. Good morning. Hello, everybody. It's 10 a.m. and uh, it's wonderful to be here in the uh, the Warhope region, the beautiful hinterland of the Port Quarry Hastings area. Um, welcome to today's council meeting being held at the wonderful Warhope Country Club. I welcome those in attendance in the gallery and those also watching via live stream. We love having you on board as well. This council meeting is being recorded while it is being live streamed to YouTube. The view you should see today during the live stream to YouTube will show the minutes of the meeting being recorded and the councillors and the senior staff. As this recording will be available as a public record, those in attendance, including councillors, staff and members of the public, should refrain from making any defamatory statements. I would also like to remind the public that the recording of this council meeting is not permitted under Council's Code of Meeting Practice unless prior approval has been obtained through our CEO. I also note uh, that we have media in the room too, and I welcome you. Uh, I'd like to also acknowledge that we're gathered on Birupai land and I pay my respect to Birupai elders past, present and most importantly those emerging into their culture as young leaders. I also extend that respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders today who may be in attendance or listening live um, to this meeting. I also acknowledge and respect the many migrants that came to this great country who helped to build it into a rich and diverse multicultural Australia that we have today. And lastly, our veterans, both past and present, who have fought for the freedoms we enjoy today, such as the freedoms of speech, the freedoms of choice, and democratic freedoms to express our views. So we'll move now on to item two, remote attendance at the meeting, Madam CEO. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, we have Council Winterman who is remotely attending today. Uh, thank you very much. Can I have someone move and second that we accept remotely? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Edwards and Councillor Lipperback, all those in favour? Thank you. I'll declare that carried and uh, welcome to Council Interman online. Uh, so we'll move uh, on now thank to you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the local government thank you, Madam prayer. Mayor. It now gives me great pleasure to welcome Reverend Samuel Gittins from the Warhope Presbyterian Church to deliver our local government prayer. Welcome, Reverend. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, uh, councillors, senior staff and guests. Let's pray. God, you are good. Through you, all things exist and have there been. But not only have you given us this beautiful creation, you have created us to be faithful stewards over this world. You have made us to arrange, to order, create, make beautiful, to manage and to care for the good things you've given us. Father, we recognise that our task is difficult. We know that the work you've given us is often filled with frustration and obstruction. Lord, here in Warhope, in the Hastings Valley, we feel that. Some of the uh, wonderful staff and businesses that have been closed, the Hastings cult and the struggles they're facing. I pray that you'd be with all the staff, with the management, the customers, the community. Lord, help us to love each other, to care for each other, to know that you are good even in hard times. <coughs> Father, we pray that you'd give the Hastings cult wisdom as they try to care for their staff as best as possible. We pray, Lord, that those who are losing their positions would find good, meaningful, helpful work to replace jobs that are lost. Lord, for those who are grieving and struggling, comfort them. Help them not to give in to bitterness or resentment but to get together, support each other. We pray for our community, that's a lot, it's a big part of our life here at Warhope, and we ask that you'd be with them even now. So we thank you that we can trust you. Lord, you tell us in your word, the Bible, that our world, while beautiful, is not all that it's meant to be. Work is hard, it can be frustrating, even exhausting. And so, Lord, I pray that you would be with this council team. Help them to know your strength, your support as they seek to be good stewards. Stewards of the authority and the resources they have been entrusted with. Help them to get along, to communicate effectively, to work together on a shared vision for the Hastings. Help them to genuinely care for each other in their common service. Lord, it can be a thankless task to serve and lead, knowing that in every decision and with limited resources, 
The needs or wants of some often comes at the cost of others. Lord, give them wisdom to balance. Uh, balance the needs of the few with the many, the demands of regulation with the need to support jobs, the need for productivity while managing resources and the environment. I'm sure there are many other challenges beside these. Father, please be with them. Father, I thank you for the councillors and staff of the Port Macquarie Hastings Macquarie Council. Council. I thank you for their hard work and their willingness, willingness to carry this responsibility. Carry this responsibility. Carry this responsibility. Lord, we thank Lord, you, we thank you, 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 thank you
And that's been unanimously carried. If we can uh, represent that in the minutes, thank you. Michael, if you could just let me know when we're good to go. Excuse me, Councillor Intimate, if you can hear us, could you just say something to test it? Thank you, Michael. Yes, I have been here all this time. I hope you can hear me now. I am speaking. I am speaking. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Perhaps we're ready to pray for no technical difficulties as well. Just a silent prayer will do. We'll all pray for that. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. <laughs> this is what real life real like. Real life. Real life. Hello, 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 hello. I am speaking, I am speaking, I am speaking. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Um, Madam May, um, Michael, can you see if Councillor Intman is putting a hand up in favour or against? That's a good idea. Can be cured. Can be cured. Can be cured. Can be. And, and I've had a text to say she can be cured as well. As well. Okay. Hello. 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 I can hear you very well, but hello, 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 hello. I am speaking. Has anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? I can hear you. Very, very good. Who is hearing me? Hi, my name is Debbie. I'm um, Keith Henschke's executive assistant. Hello, Debbie. Hello. <laughs> so, um, uh, I am a four then. So we've put abstain, um, right. but I'm actually so we'll four. Item number 10 .03. I'm four. Thank you. I am voting. I am voting in favour. Um, can anybody hear me yet? I'm still in favour. Councillor Intamin, I can hear you. Would you like me to pop something in the chat for you? Um, yes, so um, I can text somebody or put my thumb up or whatever for 
um, for the voting. Um, would you like me to just message that you were for that vote? Yes, thank you. Thank you. No problems. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 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 Thank you, Madam Mayor
Okay, thank you. Do we have seconder? Seconded by Councillor Lippervat. Like to speak yes, to this? Thank you. Uh, the recent use of the casting vote clearly does concern some people in our community, um, as referred to by Councillor Roberts. However, in my opinion, we shouldn't be using ratepayer resources, ratepayer money on a CEO report uh, to provide councillors with publicly available information that we can readily find ourselves. In my opinion, to address the community concerns, uh, what we should be doing as councillors is to seek this information ourselves uh, and um, further that the presiding chair should apply the accepted principles for the democratic use of the casting vote, namely that the casting vote shouldn't be used to end debates and shouldn't be used to make final decisions, big changes without a majority. So in the last four meetings um, attended by current presiding chair, the mayor, the casting vote was used 43 times, including to end debate and to make final decisions on very big matters without a majority. Examples of those decisions include going to a binding referendum, a binding referendum, to reduce councillor numbers from nine to seven, uh, to stop council from providing information about this referendum to our community, to terminate the deputy mayor role, to change a scheduled meeting date to accommodate personal business commitments, to request a report on the impacts and options of a proposed rate freeze in December and then in February to ignore the comprehensive 20-page staff report that was provided to us and progress the rate freeze anyway. So this use of the, the casting vote is completely lawful under the Act and under the Code of Meeting Practice and under the Code of Conduct. But with those sorts of decisions, in, in my opinion, it's quite reasonable that our community have some concerns and are asking questions like, does this use of the casting vote pass the pub test? So then, there's the question of how we address those concerns. So your NOM proposes that we get a, a ratepayer funded report from the CEO. My question is, why should ratepayers fund a report? Why should we use public resources to provide information that councillors can easily get ourselves? I've already circulated fundamental information earlier this week uh, based on the recommendation at that time that we request uh, information in, that report, in the report from the CEO about the Local Government Act, the um, Office of Local Government Code of Meeting Practice position. But of course, the, the, the request that went onto the agenda was that also that we look at the state and federal parliament um, approaches, the principles, uh, or the approach to the casting vote. <coughs> I have a further question, why should we spend ratepayer money on a report when history tells us that potentially this report will simply be ignored if it doesn't provide the answers that were wanted, as happened with the rate freeze last month. In my opinion, the way for council to address the community concerns about the use of the casting vote is for interested councillors, including the mayor, to access this information without cost to the ratepayer. Then, whoever is presiding as chair should apply the accepted principles for democratic and ethical use of the casting vote to allow further debate and not to make final decisions without a majority. Uh, thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Um, I'm going to speak in opposition of this, um, which you would expect me to do. And, and this is a classic example of why, why we have a split council, because we have opposing views. It's human nature that people see things in a certain way and other people see things in a different way. And that's the makeup of our community. Our community sees things in varied ways. The community that speaks to me, um, it sees, sees things in a very similar way to the way I see it as well. I note, uh, Councillor Shepherd, that you, you have um, posted and, and on the public record said that the casting vote isn't illegal um, the casting vote is recognised in the Code of Meeting Practice. The casting vote isn't, um, isn't against uh, any Code of Conduct. You also say it's not morally wrong. I guess for me, um, I have a question for you to understand what your concerns actually are, considering the fact that we do have a split council, considering that um, there are items that we see we don't see eye to eye on, we do see differently. We are in a democratic um, system here in local government. The casting vote is used differently from the state and the federal government. So I would really um, welcome the opportunity, Councillor Shepherd, to understand 
what the concerns are as far as the casting vote is concerned and ask, do you acknowledge that whilst it was used 43 times in the last four meetings, do you acknowledge that the times that every time that that casting vote was used, it was because we had a 4-4 four -four split? So, I can't, I, so two questions there, and as I understand it, what are my concerns about the use of the casting yes, vote? thank you. And secondly, do I acknowledge that there's a, a full force split on those 44 occasions, uh, 43 occasions? Yes. So in, in relation to my concerns, there is a reason that there's been principles set out uh, for use of the casting vote in the state and federal parliaments, and, and those, those principles have arrived from dozens or over a hundred years worth of decision making in some cases and uh, the the information that I provided early this week and the sources that I made available to you so you could go and check the information I was providing make it make it very clear that yes there's exceptions um, there are precedents that can guide guide the houses when it comes to it but ultimately these are shared principles between the state and the federal governments what's notable is that those principles are also shared uh, in, in the corporate sector, that there's an understanding that the principle of not using a casting vote to end debate is, is basically democratic. That not using a casting vote to significantly change the status quo, uh, or, or sorry, that using the casting vote to change the status quo significantly, to make big changes, make final decisions, would be anti-democratic, would be undemocratic. And so that's the fundamental concern I have here, especially when I look at that list of decisions that have been made. They're not, um, those decisions aren't decisions that are simply, you know, of interest and of different opinions here within this room. They're decisions that are of interest and concern to our whole community. And so when we have four councillors who received less than, you know, 50% of the votes, so foreseeably represent less than 50% of voters, who are consistently getting one view across the line every time with the use of a casting vote, we have to, we have to question whether that truly reflects the needs of our broader community. I, uh, like um, Councillor Roberts, have done some analysis um, at, um, at, and aware of further analyses of the voting patterns of this council, and the consensus rate is far less than, than 80%. And what we saw when um, we had a nine-person councillor, that councillor who did resign, uh, voted with um, yourself at Team Pence and councillors approximately 65% of the time. That means 35% of the time she voted differently. So if that casting vote was actually hers, we would see a different vote, a different result approximately 35% of the time. And you know, that, that, would, that would be a bit more democratic in my view, even if I don't agree with the ultimate decision. So the process element here is very important to me. My concern is, is the process, because the process is how you determine whether a, a, a result is likely to be good or not. So that's, that's, the, that's my answer to what are my concerns. Um, in relation to the, the matter of the, the split votes, I think it's really important, as we acknowledged in the last meeting, uh, that it's, it's really important that we note the four, four councillors who have received the benefit of the casting vote on every single one of those 43 occasions were all voted from one ticket. Um, you know, usually there's an expectation councillors will be uh, acting independently and um, considering each merit on its own once they're voted in. Um, and that, you know, that, that might be the case. But what we see is four councillors are voting together every single time getting the benefit of the casting vote, who came from one ticket. And then we have four councillors who came from four different tickets, four different walks of life, four different networks, representing four different sets of, of values, uh, who have somehow arrived at a different position on those 43 occasions. And um, the fact of arriving at those conditions has come from considering each issue on its merit. So while I acknowledge four councillors have voted uh, uh, in one way and four councillors have voted in another way and received the benefit of the casting vote on those 43 occasions, I think it's really important that you understand um, how that has come, come to arise. Thank you for sharing your views and um, thank you, Reverend. Thank you for sharing your views, Councillor uh, Shepherd, and answering those two questions. Any other discussion on this, Councillor Adam? Madam Mayor, uh, Madam Mayor, Mayor, Adam Roberts. Either which way, thank you. <laughs>
Uh, so I'd just like to speak in opposition to the amendment. Um, if we're talking about a pub test, I think what you have to do is actually get out and talk to people and, and get that view uh, from around the room. And I've done that um, quite a lot, as you can probably see by the chassis. But at the end of the day, uh, what people are talking about is the roads that are being um, upgraded, constructed, the parks and gardens that have been tidied up, uh, the footpaths being constructed. Um, they're also talking about cost of living. They're talking about pressures on small business. They're talking about probably everything other than the mayor's casting vote, in my view. Uh, and that's, I think, as honest as I can be on that particular issue. Um, the other thing that I think it's, uh, it's very, very good to remember is that um, although we keep bringing up the last election, it just keeps popping up, but the community put their trust in the mayor to lead the community. And in my view, and as a voter, um, I wanted to put my vote with someone who th I thought would get it right more often than they got it wrong. And, and I gave my vote to you, Madam Mayor. And I'm sure other people did for the same reason. Um, but the results were that you got 71.4% of the vote on the two candidate preferred, which is seven out of 10 people in that pub gave you their vote to make sure that when the tough decisions need to be made, that you would do it with diligence and on their behalf. So with that, I absolutely support this report coming forward so people can have a fair and equitable understanding of how you use your vote to benefit the community, not individual councillors. Okay, thank you, Councillor Robert. Any other Excuse questions? me, Madam Mayor, can you hear me? Madam Mayor? Thank you, Madam can Mayor, as the me, seconder Madam of this uh, particular um, motion that uh, Councillor Shepherd has put forward. And, and wow, thank you for a very comprehensive um, argument in relation to this particular item. Um, I don't have a lot to add, to be honest, uh, because of the fact I believe you've covered, covered it all. Um, I would love to hear the opinion and the thoughts of uh, Councillor Interman. So a question through you, Madam Mayor, uh, to Councillor Interman. I would love to hear from her 20 years worth of experience, um, her thoughts on this particular matter. Thank you, Councillor Lipovac. Can you hear me, Madam Mayor? Hello. Hello, um, hello. We still have Councillor Interman offline at the moment. We're struggling with this technicality. So. Can, can we please, uh, I'd like to move an amendment, an amendment in order to ensure that Councillor Interman can participate uh, in the debate so we can sort out the technicals. And, uh, sorry, an adjournment. Okay, so we have, um, sorry, can we just see if Councillor Lipovac is finished and then I'll come to your adjournment. I haven't finished. I would like to hear from Councillor Interman, please, Madam Mayor. And I am trying to speak, yeah, trying to speak, trying to speak. It's not possible. So, trying to speak. Trying to speak. Trying to speak. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. In my opinion, in response to a comment made a short time ago by Councillor Roberts in relation to the support the Team Pinson ticket received in 2021. I think if you go out there and have a chat to people now, you'll find I'm that text, support. I'm texting in my with, opinion, with Michael. This is ridiculous. I have uh, to come back time, there. In my opinion. Order. Order 1511. 1511. <laughs> D. Councillor Lipovac. We're not going to get personal in the council meeting here today. We're going to stick to the items, we're going to do the business of council as our community expects us to. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I, I also would like to mention the fact that we can't get council intimate involved in this particular meeting, and that may not happen over the next few hours, that there was a motion I put forward late last year in relation to conducting all meetings at the council chambers in Port Macquarie, which was initially approved and then denied at a following meeting, so we can avoid Situations like this that will occur from time to time from taking the meetings out to Warhope or Lauriton. In that motion, I did also indicate that it would be great to have the public forums in Warhope and Lauriton, but all meetings should remain in the council chamber to ensure that we are giving our very best, we have all our resources available to us, and we don't have any concerns about not being able to get councillors' viewpoints across because of a, a technical glitch. Um, at that point in time, in between those two meetings, there was not one phone call, not one email that said, from Warhope or Lauriton residents, Camden Haven or the Warhope hinterland that indicated that would be a bad decision, that they didn't want that to happen. 
yet we had that overall to the next meeting. Um, thank, thank you. I'll leave Councilor it at that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Luther. I, I just, I just need to, uh -huh. just to say that this is a technical difficulty that we're having. This is nobody's fault. It is unfortunate. We did have Councillor Intamin here at the start of the morning, and she has had to leave. Um, and the fact that she's had to leave and come in remotely is making this a little bit more difficult than it should be. Um, now, Councillor Shepherd, do you want to move an adjournment? Uh, yes, just a point of order to start with. My understanding is that, in fact, uh, on the live stream, everyone can hear Lisa Interman. Mm -hmm. um, she's not necessarily aware of that. And I would like to move an adjournment, noting that it is in the best interest of Council that uh, we resolve the technical issues and have an appropriate live stream occurring, uh, and we resolve that outside of the live stream. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Someone to second, seconded by Councillor Edwards. Thank you. Those in favour? Councillor Lipovac, Councillor Edwards and Councillor Shepherd. Those against? Yes. Myself, Councillor Roberts, Councillor Maltman and Councillor Slade. We've got a very large agenda ahead of us, Councillors, and I wish to progress the meeting forward. And we'll I move a motion of dissent. Um, um, I, and I understand I'm able to speak to that um, Michael? briefly, uh, well, just myself, we, we under, don't, under the Code of Meeting Practice. No, because we've resolved. So I've moved no a motion adjournment. of dissent. We, but we've, we've moved. We're moving, we're moving on. And I'm moving a motion of dissent We have, an um, from we have a motion decision. of dissent by Councillor Shepherd. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Edwards. Oh, we don't need a seconder for a motion of dissent. If you so, wish to speak to this. Um, it is extremely important that we have all of the elected representatives of our community available to represent our community in the voting and the debate that we undertake uh, while we're making decisions on their behalf. We have an opportunity here to, to take the very simple action of uh, moving into an adjournment so that we can protect the reputation of council in terms of whatever is happening on the live stream that we're not aware of and uh, to be uh, resolving the technical issues so that Councillor Interman, um, like all of us, is able to engage in this uh, debate and voting in, uh, in the most appropriate way possible. Thank you. And I'm going to respond to that. We have a very large agenda and to have an adjournment is not going to necessarily going to fix a technical problem. We could come back and the technical problem could still be there. I understand that you were telling me that she is being heard on live stream. I am chairing the meeting and for the purposes of hearing the vote, I need to hear from Councillor Interman. That is my decision as the chair. I wish to progress the business of council it is unfortunate that we're in this position at the moment. I apologise to our community for it. I think it's important that we're here in the Warhope region today. I think it's important that we take council out to our community um, of both Lauriton and Warhope. I'm not sorry that I'm here with you all in Warhope today. You're a wonderful community. I thank those of you who've turned out and I wish to progress uh, the business of council and uh, for that reason, I'll put the motion of, of dissent to the vote. Those in favour? Councillor Lipovac, Councillor Edwards and Councillor Shepherd. Those against? Myself, Councillor Roberts, Maltman and Slade. We'll now move back to the amendment. Councillor Edwards. Mm -hmm. Please do. Perfect. Okay, we've got a solution to the problem. Thank you very much. Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm speaking in support of this um, amendment for the reason that, uh, as has been outlined in the argument today, it's possible that all councillors could, could go away and um, over the next month seek this information themselves. And it is my hope uh, that councillors would, would do just that. We might then save the need to spend ratepayers' money on having a report um, from the CEO in April or requesting one in April. Uh, and I would hope that, actually, in the spirit of um, what we just heard at the start of this meeting, um, Reverend Samuel um, just gave us um, such a such a inspirational talk about how we try to understand each other better, work with each other better, respect each other better, and our decisions. And so, 
this, this, the topic of the casting vote, of which this uh, motion and amendment are, are on, um, it, it, it's so important. This is where we actually can uh, demonstrate this to our community, that we don't close down debate and, and move on, that we hear from everybody and that we don't find we're in a situation where it's 4-4 and a casting vote is used and we haven't even heard from sometimes three out of four of um, voters. So we, we need to do better. Uh, I hope that we could all go away. I'm going to support this amendment and look into this ourselves and come back and do better. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Any further discussion on this, councillors? I'll put the amendment to the vote. Oh, okay, thank you. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to turn off. I can't hear you. I'll turn you off. I'll speak through the phone. Madam Mayor, I'm sorry, I can't now. I get feedback, so I can't uh, no, hear okay. what you're saying. I will just speak through Michael's phone. I hope that you're hearing me. Thank you for the opportunity of speaking on this very important matter. It is very disturbing that the um, initial motion was to get advice from other levels of government, and now that's been removed. It appears um, for whatever reason. I'm also looking at Joski's law and procedures at meetings in Australia, and that indeed speaks to the use of the casting vote as well. It is important about the spirit of, of decision making. It is uh, completely against the spirit of good decision making that uh, we have a casting vote used to end uh, debate on a matter and also that it is in the spirit of what we are asking for of our leaders that they exercise leadership and in, ensure that there is proper communication uh, between councillors so that we can come to an agreement on these matters on which there is dispute. There is no reason for a continued 4-4 split except for the fact that unfortunately, Madam Mayor, it seems there is no willingness or want to actually get around the table and discuss uh, things order, We order. come to the council meeting. Michael? And it is just... Um, Councillor Richmond? Yes. Sorry, Madam Mayor just has something to say. Uh, yeah, I'm calling... Uh, I have the right to speak. Do I'm I calling not? order uh, under section 11, 1511D, insults, makes unfavourable personal remarks about or imputes improper motives. We're not going oh, to Madam, go there. Madam Mayor, I am speaking fact here. We're not we going there. We are entitled there. to speak fact. This is a demonstration exactly of what is going wrong in this council, that there is not an opportunity to speak properly. I think I've got my message across here. In the spirit of good, good governance, we, enti we entitle everybody to have a, have a speak and also we encourage Councillor Interman, I am not seeing this in this council at all. Thank you. Again, Thank you. again, under 1511 of the Code of Meeting Practice, Section D, an act of disorder is if you are, in, if you are insulting or making unfavourable remarks. There have been a couple of moments in, in your address, Councillor Interman, that you have done that. We're not going there with this meeting. For that reason, that is why I called order. And if we could keep Saying that in that mind are, as we move forward. You are making a ruling again that is completely in favour of oneself and Counsel not in favour of the Councillor Interman again, Councillor so Interman again, 1511, 1511D, thank you. All right, so we'll move back to the, we'll move back to the motion. Thank you, any further discussion on this? Sorry? We on the amendment? No, we voted the amendment. No, we're on the amendment. I apologise. Sorry, I looked down and it was the adjourned meeting that I saw. We're on the amendment. So is there any further discussion on the amendment? No further discussion. I'll put the amendment to the vote. Michael, if we can mm -hmm. hear from Councillor uh, Interman. Those in favour of the amendment? Councillor Lipperback, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Shepherd and Councillor Interman, those against? Myself, Councillor Roberts, Councillor Mortman and Councillor Slade. There's a 4-4 split. The, the amendment has been lost. We'll go back to the motion.
Thank you. Any further discussion on this? Yes, thank you. I'd like I'd like to speak against, and I would like to um, simply f acknowledge the first time in the last six months where the casting vote has been available and not used. And I think that deserves a, a moment of acknowledgement, even though the loss of that amendment, of course, um, follows the pattern. Absolutely. Um, I hope that our community will watch this uh, debate of this item. I hope they will see the full il illustration, I believe, of the concerns that I've cited uh, in relation to uh, the, uh, the proper principled use of the casting vote, uh, regardless of whether it's lawfulness, regardless of whether it's a, a um, consistent with the code of conduct or not, and uh, will, um, will communicate openly with their peers about, uh, about their views. It is absolutely critical for all levels of government to be building trust with our community. Part of how we're going to do that is through active engagement um, with, our, with our council, with our community, absolutely. But a part of how we do that as well is by demonstrating to our community that their elected representatives are provided with the proper opportunity to represent them. Hmm. I com commend my colleagues to vote uh, against this motion. Okay, thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Any other discussion on this, councillors? Does Councillor Interman wish to speak to this, Michael? Councillor Interman, did you wish an opportunity to speak to this? I'm sorry, what am I speaking to? I've got the amendment in front of me, the um, no. deferral. No. The amendment's been lost and the motion is what's in front of the council at the moment. Um, uh, thank you, Michael. Um, I, I, I cannot support this. Bearing in mind, it came to us with the record, with the words in it. So I speak against it. Came to us with the words in it that we also consult federal and state government. Uh, Councillor Shepherd very kindly provided those rules to councillors, uh, and now we find that we come here and those. Um, uh, rules from the federal and state government which are evidently um, not um, suitable to the mayor have now been removed and i just want to remind everybody that we are trying to work in the spirit of the law the spirit of of, of leadership and what we are asking of our leaders which is to collaborate to try to find appropriate ways forward that is not happening and I've already quoted that under the laws of meeting procedure in Australia, there is in fact provision there for the casting vote to be used exactly as was noted from Councillor Shepherd in her information regarding the federal and state government. So again, we get a slap in the face here about uh, removal of information uh, that could in fact uh, could in fact um, speak to the notion that the mayor has in fact a responsibility to consider other points of view and try to find consensus. But yet now we've got the words changed here, which means that the mayor gets the answer she wants and that's it. So Order, I speak against Councillor Thank you. Order, Councillor Eaterman again, 1511D. Please, can we refrain from this kind of behaviour in the council meeting today? Okay, any other discussion kind of on this? Generally, that's what I find from you all the time. Thank you. Any other discussion on this, councillors? No? I, I'm, I'm going to have the right of reply um, on, on this notice of motion, which I have brought into this chamber. I have brought it into the chamber to get on public record what the casting vote is actually about. It's, it, it's not an opinion. It's not someone's view, it's not feelings, it is what we work with within local government. It is unfortunate that we're in a position that we have eight councillors now instead of nine. I take on board that there may be different outcomes from different councillors from voting in different ways. But I want, to, I want to say this, I want to say this to the community and to those of you who are listening. Since being elected for a second term as mayor, I've not changed my opinion on a great many things. And I will take 
this opportunity to put on record why that is. My position has come from consultation with my community and that has come over the past almost seven years in this role. I went to the 2021 election with a position and was returned for a second term with, thank you, uh, Councillor Roberts, with 71.4% of the vote of this region. I came in on a ticket, Councillor Shepherd is right, I ran a ticket of five individuals in the community that aligned with the type of leadership I wanted to offer the Port Macquarie Hastings residents and the community at large. That team was elected along with me with over 50% of the vote. The support that's been bestowed upon me and my team has seen us always, always vote to progress decisions that are in our view that in the best interests of our ratepayers and the broader community. And how do we know that? Because we engage with them, because we're out there, because we turn up, because we're in front of community every day. I most certainly am as your mayor. Our 2021 campaign commitment has not changed. It should not come as a surprise to anyone that we're remaining focused on core business. And this has been instrumental, focusing on core business has been instrumental in this council delivering on record infrastructure projects. It's indisputable, it's out there. Wherever you drive in this region, you are seeing this organisation delivering for this community. There's six months left to go of this term. And as, as said, Team Pinson, we will deliver on the promises we made. And I do this as mayor with the full support of these, these councillors, Councillor Adam Roberts, Councillor Daniel Mortman and Councillor Josh Slade. It's unfortunate we have a split council of four to four and I make it clear that when necessary, I will continue to use the casting vote to ensure we deliver on the mandate we were given by the voters. And I brought this notice of motion, like I said, to this March council meeting for the sole purpose, may I have just a little bit of extra time. I've only spoken once on this. I hear no opposition. I brought this, this notice of motion to this March council meeting for the sole purpose of requesting our CEO produce a report to bring to the April council meeting for the purpose of being a public record. So not just councillors can go out and get information whether it's been um, you know, produced by another councillor or it's on the internet. It will be a public record of this council in relation to the casting vote and community can go on to the minutes of the meeting, to this record of the meeting in perpetuity and can go on to the council website and look it up for themselves. The purpose of the casting vote, the legality of the casting vote and the cause behind the casting vote. And whilst there's social media posts that confirm the casting vote is not illegal or immoral. There's inference being made that there's something untoward about a mayor using a casting vote. This is happening in lots of councils, not just ours, where this equality of votes is happening. The public record will show the number of times the casting vote has been used by me as a result of a 4-4 equal split in the voting. Now that pattern possibly is going to continue today and for the next six months. I'll make it clear in this chamber, as Mayor, I'm extremely proud to honour my election promises with my team, especially at a time when other politicians are backflipping on theirs. And I look forward to the CEO's report on this matter in the April meeting. Thank you. And I appreciate councillors giving me that extra time. I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. Myself, Councillor Roberts, Councillor Motley, Councillor Slade, those against? Thank yes. you, Councillor Lipperback, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Shepherd. Councillor Intamin. Yes. Could you say it again, please, Councillor Intamin? Against. Thank you, and Councillor Intamin. And no surprises, the casting vote will be used on the casting vote agenda. Thank you very much. I declare it moved. We'll move on now to item 10.04, uh, notice of motion. Thank you. Uh, Audit Risk and Improvement Committee, someone to move. Thank you. I move. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Interman. Someone to second? Seconded by Councillor Shepherd. Thank you. Councillor Interman. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll speak very briefly to this, but preface it first to say 
my apologies for non-attendance. I was there earlier and and became um, felt like I had symptoms coming on and I did not want to spread it to anyone. That's why I'm remotely and I'm so disappointed that all of this has has happened and I cannot be there and fully participate. I will speak briefly to this motion and then pass it over hopefully to another councillor to um, add further comments, perhaps Councillor Shepherd as seconder. I have moved this motion uh, because of my loss of confidence in Councillor Roberts as a representative to council on this very important committee, the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee. There's two roles for the um, uh, one important role for the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee, of course, is to ensure uh, adequate management of risks, and that includes uh, support of and um, conduct of uh, the long-term so financial sustainability of the Council. Bearing in mind uh, the decisions that were made at the February meeting led by Councillor Roberts, that did not, in fact, uh, accord with good practice mm -hmm. about allocation of funds and it did not, just to echo back to you Madam Mayor, it did not reflect management of core business of council. I'm speaking in terms of the water and sewer dividend. Uh, so therefore I do not have confidence in Councillor Roberts regarding uh, his, um, uh, his uh, uh, dealings with the matters of the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee because of those decisions that were made in February. The second point is that that representative on council is to facilitate the flow of information between councillors um, or two councillors from the councillor representative on the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee. That has not been forthcoming from Councillor Roberts in the past and I believe that I can offer a better service uh, to councillors as the representative on the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee. Not to pursue any particular agenda, but to pursue, to follow the core business of council, which is for us to be fully informed in our decisions and also, um, and to follow uh, procedures of, of good practice. Uh, in communicating with councillors. I mentioned earlier that what seems to be the lack of, an, of a willingness to um, be, have, be consultative amongst councillors. I intend to offer uh, that uh, service to councillors. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Interman. Councillor Shepherd. Thank you. I speak in support as the seconder. S certainly Councillor Interman, uh, with over uh, 25 years experience as a councillor, I think is very well placed uh, to offer um, appointment, uh, offer offer that committee a well-rounded understanding of um, a, a prudent approach to council affairs. The the purpose of that audit risk improvement committee, um, you know, are quite critical functions for council. And independent advice on aspects of council's operations, including financial management, fraud control, governance, and risk management. Um, and and of course, to act as a conduit um, between the the governing body, us as councillors, and uh, the CEO, the ARIC committee, external audit and internal audit as well. So for me, it's very important to have someone uh, in that role um, who uh, uh, who is uh, considering the appropriate um, appropriate point uh, appropriate issues um, in uh, their representation on council. So. Um, a part of my interest in, in changing that appointment to Councillor Intman is absolutely uh, her background. She has previous experience on ARIC. She understands the objectives and the role of ARIC. Um, but also I am concerned um, about the current Councillor representative. Uh, the representative in the last Council meeting, uh, I believe, um, was not showing due regard for our uh, responsibilities, our financial management responsibilities. Uh, what I mean by that is pursuing the rate freeze uh, and in particular when I note the one page risk assessment summary provided by the Director of Business and Performance uh, and supported I believe by the ARIC um, wasn't consistent with Council's risk appetite statement, was not consistent with Council's financial management obligations under the Act. Um, uh, certainly, um, 
certainly I think whoever is the councillor representative on the ARIC needs to be able to support the flow of information, but there also needs to be um, due regard for basic prudence and also the, the views of the ARIC members themselves. And so uh, with that in mind, I uh, commend uh, my peers to support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Any other discussion on this, councillors? Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, happy to uh, vote against this one. No surprise. Um, just to give everybody at home, but also people who may not be aware, um, the ARIC is uh, made up largely of um, independent members who come from afar to have a look at reports provided to them and the committee by our staff. Um, I think when it comes to the issues that have been raised here today, uh, the councillor representative is there to answer questions from those uh, committee members to the best of their ability. I believe I've always done that. Uh, the items that were listed in particular about the rate freeze, uh, possibly TCMP, which I think there's inferences made generally on that. Um, I provided a response to any questions that were, were asked of me uh, in the last meeting in particular, where a lot of these items were raised. I will note also that um, it wasn't something that uh, I added to the agenda to push in particular, and as a committee member, uh, I know that all councillors have an opportunity to have a look at the agenda before it comes out, but also the minutes after the meeting as well. So the flow of information is there for councillors uh, to have a look at. In recent times, I haven't had any request to push anything other than uh, what's been on the agenda that's come to me specifically. In the past, I have had one request to answer some questions, uh, which I referred to staff who are best placed to answer those. So. As far as information flow, if information doesn't come through to me, it's very hard to flow that on. Uh, but essentially, I'm always happy to have a look at um, uh, support or otherwise from councillors. I'm only in the role as long as there's a majority that support me to do that. I know I was appointed to the role in a split vote, um, so that may be contributing to some of the uh, discussion here today. So with that, I'm very happy to remain the uh, councillor representative. Uh, if any councillors do want to provide some information for me to follow up with Eric, happy to do that in the future. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Councillor Edwards. I just have a question, um, Madam Mayor, um, through you, and um, thank you, Councillor Roberts, for um, you know adding to this um, debate. I just picking up on the um, the feeling, the sentiment from some councillors that perhaps um, there's a bit of a, a breakdown in communication or. Um, I'm just noting that the previous non-voting member um, for, for the councillor body on ARIC was um, Councillor Griffiths, who um, appeared um, happy for observers um, to, to attend um, the meetings. Uh, just a question to you, um, Councillor Roberts. Uh, are you comfortable with uh, councillors uh, attending as observers? Happy to answer that, Madam Mayor. Um, I do believe it was a call of the chair at the time to um, ask that there be no observers so in respect of the committee I don't have a vote on that item uh, but I do respect the chair's uh, preference to have no observers thank you uh, thank supplementary you. madam mayor if I may yes yep uh, should the chair's uh, views on that matter change councillor Roberts would you be supportive of observers um, attending uh, the meeting through you madam mayor um, I would absolutely have a look at it on its merits. Um, I have had a discussion with the chair on this one and I believe the rationale was pretty sound at the time. If that changes, I'm more than happy to have a discussion. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lippeback. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Question through you to Councillor Roberts. Just for the record, can you confirm you have attended every ARIC meeting since being elected to that position? feel like I'm on trial here, Madam Mayor. Uh, the reality is I was appointed to the role um, months ago. I have attended two of the three meetings that have been had this year, uh, with an apology given for the middle meeting, as I was helping out at the Touch Football, one of Australia's uh, biggest sporting events right here in Port Macquarie. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Um, I'm just going to speak against it. Uh, it's no surprise to have ab absolute full faith in you, Councillor Roberts, as I did when you were the Deputy Mayor and um, 
I'm, I'm quite happy for you to remain on our ARIC committee, so I won't be supporting this motion. Thank you. Any other discussion, councillors, before we put it to the vote? No? All those in favour? Thank you, Councillor Lipperback, Councillor Edwards, Favour. Councillor Shepherd, and Councillor Interman. Those against? Myself, Councillor Roberts, Councillor Maltman, and Councillor Slade. Um, it's a 4 4 split, and that is lost. Thank you very much. We'll move on now to item number 10.05. Notice of motion, returns of interest. Councillor Edwards. Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And I have a, a slightly, I'm going to move um, an alternate motion here. Only slightly different, just got some extra clauses and a slight word change, so here we go. 10.05, Notice of Motion Returns of Interest, that Council 1, amend the Code of Conduct by including additional supplementary provisions as detailed below. 4.23a, the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate is authorised to decline to accept a return from a councillor or designated person that, in the opinion of the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate, is visibly incomplete, contains unclear responses, is illegible or otherwise non-compliant with the requirements of completing the return. It is noted that the analysis with respect to the measure of completeness is based on examination of whether individuals have completed all parts of the returns of interest form. This does not examine whether the information provided in the forms is in fact accurate. It is further noted that the responsibility of completing the return correctly lies with the councillor or designated person and not the chief executive officer or delegate. 4.23b. In any circumstances where council accepts lodgement of a visibly incomplete disclosure of return, that this is documented in the associated report in which the disclosure is presented to council, identifying which, disclosures, uh, is in, which disclosure is incomplete and how. And two, advocate to the Office of Local Government that the Model Code of Conduct for Local Councils in New South Wales be amended to include provisions that require councils not to accept visibly incomplete disclosures. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Shepherd, thank you. Councillor Edwards. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So, um, some may remember that uh, I initially brought a notice of motion to the November Council meeting last year uh, on the back of the fact that the um, Information <coughs> Privacy Commission um, had done a report, it had looked at returns of interest, and the report really sort of uh, suggested there was a lot of non-compliance, so I thought it prudent that we uh, have a look at ours and, and you know, check, check how we're performing. Uh, and we did do that, and that report came back to the uh, February meeting. And I moved an amendment, uh, which there was a bit of back and forth, but we, but we settled on something. And uh, there was, at the time, a couple of clauses in my amendment that um, were sort of thrown into a little bit of um, question uh, on the floor. So uh, they were removed, that was, that was uh, resolved. And uh, now we've come back uh, and I've got this amendment with this wording uh, so that we can, uh, we can ensure that we are uh, improving, moving forward uh, in a meaningful way. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Councillor Shepherd, do you wish to speak? Uh, yes, please. Uh, the disclosures of returns are really a key transparency mechanism for promoting community confidence in council decision making, whether by councillors, by staff or uh, under delegation. Um, the disclosures are basically our personal interests in publicly uh, and made publicly available in our returns of interest so, uh, so that uh, community is able to know uh, some sense of how we might be influenced in our decision making. In my view, part of what came out of the audit and then the subsequent report is that the real issue is that the model code of conduct from the OLG allows visibly incomplete disclosures to be lodged. That actually that's, that's permissible unless you introduce these clauses that ensures that in fact a, uh, a visibly incomplete disclosure of interest is is um, going to, at the very least, be documented. There's not the creation of a, a positive uh, requirement on staff here. It's simply um, that they are permitted, um, not required to, uh, to decline a visibly incomplete return of interest, um, but rather they are, they are permitted, not required to do that. And then in the case that 
a visibly incomplete disclosure is lodged, it's simply that that's documented. And, and I think that that's uh, quite prudent. But really, I think the, the most important thing um, in this uh, notice of motion is that clause two, which is we can't, we can't have a situation where, where local governments more broadly uh, are accepting visibly incomplete disclosures um, and therefore um, knowingly um, mislead or, or, mis or omit information which might be relevant for community to understand our interests and how that might impact our decision making. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Any other discussion on this? Does Councillor Interman wish to speak to this, Michael? Uh, no, thank you, Madam Mayor. I think it's all been said. Thank you. Any other discussion? Um, uh, you will in a moment. I'm, I'm just going to speak to it. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Um, so when you bought, when you brought it into council before, I didn't support it, um, and again, I don't support it. For the reasons being, there is a part that I will support if, if you're agreeable to um, maybe a, a, an amendment. Um, but at the end of the day, if we could just scroll back down to one, yep, stop. Sorry, just up a little bit, thank you. You know, it's, it's really important to understand that um, under the framework that we're working in at the moment, you have noted, it is further noted that the responsibility of completing the return correctly lies with the councillor or designated person and not the chief executive officer or delegate. I'm happy to support, if we could scroll up, thank you, Tanya. I'm happy to support that we advocate to the Office of Local Government that the Model Code of Conduct for local councils in New South Wales be amended to include provisions that require councils not to accept visibly incomplete disclosures. I am 100% supportive of point two. If you, if you wish to move an amendment, I will be supportive of that we, that we advocate through the CEO um, that, uh, that that be um, included in the Model Code of Conduct, noting that the Minister is looking to review uh, the Code of Conduct for local <coughs> councils in the future. So I'll leave that with you to ponder and I'd be interested to hear Councillor Edwards if you would consider that. Thank you. Um, well, I'll, I'll respond, Madam Mayor. I, I, I don't want to move in that direction. I feel that I hear what you're saying and that's why it's so important that point two is in there and that, that we all support it. But uh, it doesn't mean that we can't uh, still aim a little bit higher while we're waiting for them to uh, lift their game. And I think that we've, this is quite clearly um, spelling out that um, this is not an onerous task or even in, in, in an actual, um, uh, you know, in, in instruction to act a certain way. This is simply um, available um, to, the, to the person authorised to uh, receive those. Um, which, which would help. I mean, look, look, we just a little bit further along in the meeting today. You know, obviously sometimes it's quite uh, easy to make an error, and I still come back to there's nothing more important than uh, you know, as councillors, this is our number one and biggest way that we can show our community that we, you know, transparency, um, you know, integrity, that um, that they can uh, see this really important information and that we uh, have it uh, complete. So, uh, and I, I, at this stage, I really think we, you know, there's, there's just, um, there's no harm or, or excuse to not um, help us aim a little higher um, here today. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Um, Councillor Interman, if you Councillor Interman, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Michael, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I will speak now on this um, to say, I see no problem, no imposition on anyone in staff, council staff, in fact, a protection for, for council staff, that we make sure that when, when returns are lodged, that they are complete. This is a little bit, um, there's a little bit of uh, confusion on this as to uh, whether they are accurate. Obviously, the staff member cannot uh, be spending time to make sure it's accurate. It's absolutely on the uh, councillor to uh, put the correct information in there. But if it is incomplete, then surely 
rather than taking this then to a council meeting uh, to um, uh, to be completed, uh, it should. The easiest uh, remedy is to have make sure that it is complete. That is, all boxes are filled, uh, including that whether or not there is a relationship to a property developer. That's so important. Uh, so I see no problem with uh, Councillor Edwards' proposal. I agree with the uh, advocacy. Uh, however, this this could be remedied right here and now in council. Let us do it. I support this motion. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Interman. Um, a question for you, uh, Councillor Edwards. I just want to make doubly sure that you are not um, you are not wanting to support uh, advocacy through the CEO um, as a standalone, as you've got in point two. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Okay, thank you. I, all right, I'm I'm going to move an amendment. Thank you, Tanya. Um, uh, that council request the CEO and then if you just cut point two and paste copy and paste Do you, Madam CEO, do you, do you see anything that may need to be added to that? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Um, I, I'm just going to very briefly speak to this um, so, so we can move forward. Um, absolutely. The next item that we have coming up is uh, a disclosure of interest return and there are four councillors on one of them. Um, that are uh, returning interests. Um, one of mine uh, needed some updating. There are some councillors who had NA instead of NIL. I mean, you know, when you, fill in, when you fill in these disclosures, you fill them in with the information that you believe is to be correct. Uh, so the fact that you're filling it in and you think that by writing NA when you really should be writing nil, um, is a reason to have to readdress your disclosure of uh, interest returns, um, you know, is is minuscule. So I, I don't want people to think that um, as a result of this, that there is untoward things happening with, with councillors' disclosures. It is up to us as councillors to disclose um, and to provide information about the property we own, uh, any any monies we may owe to other people, it then becomes a public record that the community can then ask to see a copy of it and they can have a look at it. They can have a look. Our, our addresses may be redacted, our personal addresses where we live for security and safety purposes, but the community is within their right to, through our governance, go in and have a look at our disclosures of interest. I think that if this is going to be tightened, it should be done so through uh, the Office of Local Government um, and through a overhaul of the Model Code of Conduct. I think that's appropriate. I think it's appropriate that through you, Madam CEO, that we, um, we advocate for that. Any other discussions on this? Councillor Shep. Question, Madam Mayor, uh, to you. Uh, it's still unclear to me uh, what what is it that would make a councillor or make you not want council to be aware if a disclosure was lodged and was visibly incomplete? What is it that would stop you from, from wanting that to be documented, that a visibly incomplete disclosure, which can certainly include more areas of incompleteness than, than what you've described there, what, what would stop you from wanting that to be simply documented. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. I do note that your disclosure um, is, is submitted in the next uh, disclosure of interest return. Um, I think that you filled yours out in good faith, just as I filled mine out in good faith, and I I'm, I'm, can't speak for Councillor 
Robert, Slade and, and Maltman, but I'm sure we all filled them in in, um, in good faith. Oh, you're not noted, Councillor Slade, but I'm sure when you filled yours in, it was in good faith. We all did that. I mean, um, I, this, this is part of the process that we work within. If we need to up the process, let's advocate it, uh, advocate for it through the state government. That's why I've moved the amendment. Let's advocate for an increase through the state government for all councils. Let's make it through the Office of Local Government, all councils, um, through the Model Code of Conduct. Supplementary, uh, Madam Mayor, do, do, do you understand that uh, what was proposed in the original motion uh, was not simply to accept inc visibly incomplete disclosures and then document that they were incomplete, but actually permit staff to decline to accept them um, and then so foreseeably if someone insisted that uh, um, that even though it was visibly incomplete that they wanted to um, lodge it formally in that visibly incomplete form that would be the only reason for it to be documented thank you councillor Shepherd. i think i answered it i i think i've answered your question Thank you. So I'll, I'll speak against. First thing I'd like to say is people absolutely should not assume that there is anything untoward uh, resulting uh, from this item. Um, it, what I would say is that uh, the disclosures are one of the best ways our community has to be holding us accountable. Uh, and so I would thoroughly encourage community members to look at our disclosure, disclosures and I, I think the best path to transparency and accountability around that is to collate each councillor's um, the disclosures that they've made throughout this uh, term and to you know compare them over time look at what has changed if, if anything um, what you'll see what you'll see on mine is certainly very administrative changes to um, the one that I'm disclosing today I've, I've now got the um, address of Port Macquarie Hastings Council on there however there are significant changes uh, over time in some in some um, of the disclosures that have been lodged throughout this term and so I highly um, um, recommend community members not to assume there is anything untoward rather have, have a look for yourself that's why it is there and so um, the removing the opportunity for council to ensure that we're aware when visibly incomplete disclosures are lodged, I think is very odd, very odd, very odd. Thank you, in your opinion, thank you. Councillor Edwards. Councillor Regent Council has a question, sorry, oh. would you like to? Thank you. Um, uh, so my question is, um, I support what was put forward by Councillor Edwards. I think it's the most appropriate way forward. However, if it's going to come down to push and shove, I'll, I'll support this um, amended um, or this motion amendment that's up now. But the question is, Michael, if it is just, sorry, um, uh, the manager of governance, if uh, we this amendment gets up, then what will be the procedure if you receive a a disclosure that is incomplete will you be like assessing them and going back to staff anyway is that going to be the process what would be your procedure thank you uh, through you madam ceo that's correct um if we received these from councillors and staff we would look at them to see whether there are any areas that weren't addressed and suggest that they be addressed and resubmitted if that was the case so when you said error, you mean incompleteness? Uh, no, sorry, I didn't say errors. I said areas. So if oh, there's any sorry, areas yes. that weren't addressed, uh, we would yes. suggest they be completed. Uh, thank you. So um, as per now, there's no um, uh, checking on is this address correct? Is this company properly declared, etc., etc. That you don't go to that extent. It's just are uh, all the areas uh, filled in and you would check that and you would not accept it if there were areas that, or oh, until all those areas were filled in, is that correct? Um, through you, Madam CEO, at this stage, we can't not accept it. However, we do have a practice where we do review them all and go back to the person lodging it. And we do suggest that they fill in any blank areas that should have had a response. So how would we deal with that if there was a refusal by a councillor to fill something in? 
it would be submitted as it was. Uh, with a note in the report that there, that there was an incompletion. Councillor Interman, Councillor Interman, you, you haven't requested for supplementary questions. And I think um, Michael Ferguson, um, Group Manager Governance, has answered those questions. You are free to ask more questions um, via email or offline after, after the meeting. Uh, your usual um, diplomacy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank there you. is psychism thank, there. Thank, thank you, Councillor Interman. Councillor Edwards. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have um, a, a question for you. So I suppose considering uh, looking back at the February meeting and, and what we resolved on, which um, was largely your um, amendments, um, which took some of my uh, amendment, um, and you were happy to support. So the question is, um, I suppose, why did you support the, the clauses that you did at the February meeting where we do have the situation where, uh, you know, a, a look at the returns was, was taken and then um, individual councillors were advised if there was um, some incompleteness and that we had uh, this... this um, this report back to this meeting. I just wonder what's different about what's different about this um, original notice of motion that I was moving today, um, which which takes into account ca all councillors and delegated persons, so the whole organisation. Uh, so I'm just wondering why you supported um, that what you did in February, but but you can't support this today. Councillor Edwards, I, I and and it's on record. I've asked. I asked you twice if you would support this amendment so I could support you and you said no this is where I'm inclined to go today in the March council meeting and I did ask you because I, 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 I want to support that advocacy through the office of local government happens for this I think that's that's appropriate that's where the change needs to happen not at our level but across the local government board um, you declined that. I asked you a second time. You declined that, and this is where we're at at, at the moment. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for taking the time to ex explain your position, and I do appreciate this um, this point um, to advocate to um, the OLG. But I speak against um, for the reason being that really, um, it, you know, we don't need to wait to be led um, by the state government through the OLG. We have the freedom and the ability to improve our code of conduct ourselves. So there's enough other times where we're, you know, dictated to or, or held up um, uh, by um, other levels of government. And, and this is not one of those cases. We could we could get on and improve our own code of conduct. We have that power, that freedom. And uh, so I, I, I don't support this just because I don't think it goes far enough today. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Any further discussion, councillors? I'll put the amendment to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. Myself, Councillor Roberts, Maltman, Slade, Lippervac. Do we have Councillor no. Interman? Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, no, all against, against. Okay. So may I clarify, is this the amendment or is this that? Is this, this is the amendment. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, I will, I'll just take that, that vote again. So we have for the amendment, myself, Councillor Roberts, Maltman, Slade and Lippervac. Those against, Councillor Edwards, Shepherd, and Councillor Interman. Interman, Interman. Thank you. Against, against. Thank you. So the amendment is now the motion. I think we've discussed this enough, councillors. Unless somebody wants to say something else, no, I'll put the motion to. Um, I, I wish I wish to just speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I will vote for the motion so that we can move forward. But I think that the point was raised by Councillor Edwards very well that we have the opportunity here to improve our processes voluntarily. It would not be an impost on staff, and so. I really cannot understand the logic of uh, not going down the path of Councillor Edwards' proposals. Nevertheless, I'll, I'll um, vote for this now that it's the motion so that we can at least get something happening. Thank you. I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. Myself, Councillor Robert Smaltman, Slade, Lippervac, Edwards, and you, Councillor Interman? Yes, I'm in yes, favour. Yes, thank you. And those against? Councillor Shepherd, I'll declare that carried. Thank you very much. We'll move on now to item 10.7, disclosure of returns designated person. Someone to move. Moved by Councillor Shepherd. Thank you. Someone to second. 10.6. 10 
Sorry, six. Thank you very much. 10.6. Councillor Shepherd. Someone second? Councillor Edwards, thank you. Councillor Shepherd. Uh, I'd simply like to reiterate my previous points that um, the disclosures are one of the key ways our communities have to be aware of our interests and how they might influence our decision making. One of the best ways to consider that is to look at uh, those disclosures over the course of the term and I encourage um, interested community members to do so. Uh, with mine you'll see uh, minor administrative um, changes between these, uh, my previous return of interest and the new one and I was really pleased for the opportunity to, um, to, to see that some of the result of the audit uh, was a, a, a um, extra scrutiny on disclosures as they were coming in in the first place. I think that's an excellent outcome. Thank you Councillor Edwards. Uh, just, just simply to briefly say I suppose as, as um, the councillor that probably initiated this process I'd just like to thank all councillors that updated their return. Thank you Councillor Edwards. Any other discussion? I hear none. I'll put it to the vote then. All those in favour? Uh, no, that's 10.7. It's both. Both items. For both? There's two there. Oh, sorry. I only had it for 10.7. Yep, okay. If I could get you to come and break that. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. All right, all those in favour? Thank you. Councillor Interman? In favour. Thank you. I see none again, so I'll declare that carried. All right, now we'll move on to item number 10.7. I do have some documents to be tabled again. <laughs> you just want to stretch your legs. <laughs> um, so on to move. Councillor Shepherd, seconded by Councillor Lipovac. Thank you. Any discussion on this? No, I'll put it to the vote then. All those in favour? Thank you. Councillor Interman? Yes, in favour. Thank you. I'll declare that unanimous. We'll now move on to item number 10.08, question with notice, code of meeting practice or code of conduct. Councillor Interman? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I put in a question uh, with notice uh, that um, asked if there was any provisions that are available or could be made made available under any instrument to prevent resolutions <coughs> involving significant financial commitment from being made without relevant staff advice. I received a verbal response uh, from, uh, from staff uh, which and to which I have now I'm now proposing an amended uh, motion. Um, that being that the Chief Executive Officer be requested to assess against the risk appetite statement the question of significant expenditure being decided at a council meeting without relevant council staff advice and consider an appropriate amendment for inclusion in the next review of the Code of Meeting Practice. I think that, uh, thank you, I'll move that. Thank you. A seconder, please. Councillor Shepherd, thank you. If you'd like to speak to it, Councillor Inchman. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, in our code of meeting practice, there is already provisions to preclude uh, changes to the adopted uh, um, operational plan uh, without uh, staff advice. And there are preclusions against a notice of motion being put uh, that involves a significant financial expenditure uh, without there being an identification of where that fund, those funds might come from. Uh, at the last council meeting, uh, we had a resolution uh, that was not, not accompanied by staff advice that involved uh, significant reallocation or allocation of funds, uh, $1.2 million to repay the uh, um, TCMP loan out of the water and sewer dividend and there was no staff advice associated with that. It, there was no advice to uh, counsel, for counsellors uh, as to um, that the fact that this was being brought up 
Uh, this meant that there was a decision made on the floor without prior notice to councillors and without information to, from staff. Uh, that meant a significant allocation of funds uh, without that advice. Uh, I'm now recommending or requesting that this happen, that the Chief Executive Officer review our, uh, this matter in light of our risk appetite statement and make um, an appropriate recommendation for consistency across uh, this matter of allocation of significant financial uh, investment um, in the uh, to ensure that it does have staff advice uh, before that is um, that is uh, considered and potentially adopted. Uh, so this could come through in the next uh, code of meeting practice um, if we have a. We put out an amendment to the code of meeting practice. It has to be out on exhibition first off. It has to be drafted. Then it has to come back to council in order to uh, approve the exhibition and then 42 days on exhibition. Then uh, consideration of the, um, of the uh, feedback from the community. Uh, then go to the count, go to start, um, to council for a decision. That would mean rolling forward. That would mean it would be at least July, perhaps August, even later, before this could come to the council for consideration. By which time we will be on the doorstep of uh, an election. And so, as the new council will have to adopt a new co or rather review the code of meeting practice, uh, it seems appropriate to go down this path and get the chief executive officer's um, consideration under the risk appetite statement in order to be able to um, improve the code of meeting practice to accommodate any any situation where there's significant um, proposal for significant financial uh, expenditure in the absence. Uh, so it should not come through without having staff advice. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Interman. Um, I just um, have a question for you, uh, Councillor Interman. Uh, what what makes you think there wasn't um, any advice sought in relation to that matter that you that you're speaking of? Uh, well, I was certainly not made aware of any advice, any such advice. So, do you know for certain that um, there was no advice from staff, or is that your assumption? I, I am aware that I was not advised of any any um, advice sought through staff. And again, this comes down to the exa another example of if there was advice sought, then why were ca all councillors not advised of it? Why were we simply presented with this on the floor? And if there was advice that was withheld from councillors, well. That's uh, against all principles of uh, of how we try to make um, consensus decision making. I hope that answers your question, Madam Mayor. Um, it certainly does. Thank you, Councillor Interman. Councillor Shepherd. Uh, yes, thank you. I speak in support, and I suppose to clarify that that question, uh, what happened in the last meeting on that item was that one point two million dollars of public funds was allocated. <laughs> Uh, with advice being provided from staff to all councillors. So whether it was sought or not, it was not provided to all councillors and could not reasonably be because the proposal for the allocation of that $1.2 million of money was made on the floor of council without notice to at least four councillors anyway. So off the back of that, it was absolutely prudent uh, to be asking this question, what mechanisms are available to make sure that Council just can't direct this money without having um, received, so not necessarily sought, but received advice from staff about the financial implications, about the costs to delivery and other areas, that sort of thing. So a very prudent question and because there was that preliminary answer that um, we can do that through potential amendments through the Code of Meeting Practice, we're instead able to come to this um, improved question. Thank you, Councillor Interman, for circulating that to all councillors uh, last night via the proposed amendments. And so we've found this path forward. As um, Councillor Interman has outlined, um, yes, we could be pursuing putting this on exhibition right now, but it just doesn't make sense timeline-wise and resource-wise, knowing how under the pump staff uh, already are. It, it has struck me during this meeting, there's another reason why I prefer the the current question over the original question that's published in the papers. Um, and I, I'm not going to suggest that we amend this further, but 
it, it's one thing for council on the floor without without notice to community or councillors or, or recommendations being received from staff. It's one thing to make significant expenditure changes, $1.2 million, but it's, it's also problematic if we're making other significant changes on the floor of council without notice to our community and without even giving notice to councillors. And I think there's a potential that the risk appetite statement actually provides us guidance in relation to, to governance, reputational risks, all those sorts of things, uh, extended beyond purely the financial risks that, that we consider with the risk appetite statement. So I, I think that's something, rather than for us to make an, an amendment at this stage, we just keep that in mind um, for the future. And that's particularly relevant because there is, in fact, a pattern with with the current um, with the current council that items are being brought um, on the floor of council. We we had all references to climate change received removed from uh, council's core strategic planning document, the community strategic plan, and that was done on the floor of council without notice to community or councillors. The decision to go to referendum, a binding referendum on reducing councillor numbers from nine to seven, that was also proposed and decided by the casting vote in that case on the, on the floor of council. Um, these are big decisions that have serious implications for the governance of our community into the future that um, aren't necessarily significant expenditure, like $1.2 million, but absolutely are um, relevant to consider in the context of our risk appetite statement. We should always be making decisions um, with uh, the relevant information, recommendations being provided from staff. Uh, otherwise, we risk um, going down a very, very slippery slope. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Any other discussion on this, Councillors? Can I just note, Michael, that this is a motion, not an amendment. Thank you, thank you Councillor Interven, you're correct. Councillor Roberts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, um, just for this one, I'm gonna vote against it. Um, what I normally do as a councillor, if I'm putting forward a motion, I'll put quite a few forward, as, as most councillors would understand. Um, I always check to see whether what I'm putting forward is legal and it fits within a framework. So from that, that point of view, I always um, do the best that I can to check with staff, in particular the relevant staff, that whatever I put forward is, is within the boundaries of what a councillor is able to put forward. I don't see any decision that I'll put forward uh, motion that I've put forward, a decision to be made off the back of that was illegal. If it was, um, I, I would think that that would be raised with us uh, post um, event and rectified. But anything that um, has just been mentioned, I believe has gone through a process of at least checking to see whether it's within our remit as councillors to put forward. And that's the test that I always put. Um, so I think the system works. Um, I don't think we need to burden our CEO with more work um, because the, the simple fact is that that work's normally done before something's uh, allowed to go on the agenda or whether it's allowed to be put on the floor and that uh, the mechanisms are already in play for that. So on that basis, I'm not uh, inclined to support and load up staff with anything further on that one. Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Councillor Shepard. Madam Mayor, through you to Councillor Roberts. Um, uh, well, actually, so first of all, I just want to um, uh, correct a, uh, what I believe is a misrepresentation as allowed under the Code of Meeting Practice, um, being that I want it to be very clear that I'm not suggesting that uh, what has been resolved is illegal, uh, that I'm not suggesting it's unlawful, I'm, I'm not suggesting that it's um, not allowed under the Code of Meeting Practice or the Code of Conduct. Um, I'm asking a question, <laughs> I, I'm making a point, um, I guess it could be summarised as the pub test. Um, does, does this pass the pub test if people have all of this information? And um, I, I would like to ask, um, through you, Madam Mayor, Councillor Roberts, uh, whether, whether you feel that um, the community would uh, agree that just because something's lawful and just because something's allowed under the Code of Conduct, that that's something we should pursue. Through you, Madam Mayor, I've been pretty fair in answering most questions or if not every question put. I think that's incredibly broad. Um, I refer to my comments before. Thank you. Thank you. Um, off the back of the pub test comment, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to support this. We were, we were elected 
by the community in 2021 to come into chamber to make decisions that are in what we believe the best interests of the ratepayer dollar and also the broader community. Now, that may differ from councillor to councillor. What you what you think might not pass the pub test, councillor Shepherd, I might be in the pub and think that that's okay. Another community member may not think it's okay and another community may, member may think it's okay. This is democracy. Any Anything that is illegal does not come into the agenda via the CEO and um, I, I take very seriously my responsibility as an elected um, to manage the public funds of the community, which are not infinite. We don't have lots of ratepayer dollar to be wasted. If anything, I want to see the ratepayer dollar better used so we don't have excessive rate increases into the future. So I, I, I'm not supporting this. Um, I think that it is inherent on us as councillors to decide where public funds go with advice from the CEO and her staff and in consultation in preparation for our budgets which happen once a year which an enormous amount of grant funding from state and federal governments and also our public funds from our ratepayers go. So I'm not, I'm not going to be supporting this particular motion. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Um, well, question, Madam Mayor, just um, because it's been mentioned a number of times in this debate on this item that um, s advice perhaps was sought, um, a question through you um, to, the, to the CEO. Um, was advice provided um, to Councillor Roberts um, on, the, on the item that has been referred to here um, today? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, we, we received the noms that came in. Um, we were asked questions whether or not they were legal um, to put those noms up. That's the first lens that we put across that. Um, we seek advice and the advice is that councillors can make that decision. Um, as long as it's not an illegal nom, um, then we basically can say you can proceed. Um, if we feel um, that there's any uh, legalities that we need to run through a legal advice, we'd ask for it to be um, deferred till we got further information. Um, but in that situation, uh, that was the information. I can understand you probably didn't feel you had all the information necessary, but really the information was, is it legal? Um, can you do that? Um, and you asked a number of questions on the floor around the loans and the payout of the loans. Um, and Director Henschke responded back at the last council meeting around that as well. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm just think, uh, wanted you to have a look at uh, whether we've got two for and two against so the item can be put. Okay, well, we do. Do you, do you wish to put the item? Yes, I'd like to put the item. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Slade. All right, all those in favour that the item be put, the motion be put. Myself, Councillor Roberts, Councillor Mortman, Councillor Slade. Those against? And Councillor Lipovac, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Shepherd, and Councillor Inter. Against. Thank you. We we'll use the casting vote. The motion has been put. So I'll put the motion to the vote now. All those in favour. Uh, excuse me, Madam Mayor. I have a right of reply. Thank you, Councillor Interman. It's very disappointing to hear uh, this uh, kind of discussion going on. Lawfulness is absolutely the first um, the first principle that uh, governs whether or not something can come to the floor. But I would also like to um, bring uh, to uh, councillors' attention, as was as was conveyed in my original question on notice, uh, that there are meeting principles uh, that we are also expected to follow. There's eight of them. Um, three of them are very. Uh, three of them are very appropriate here, and that is transparent, informed, principled, and trusted uh, decisions. These dis these are principles that we should be following and ensuring that they happen uh, in our meetings, regardless of lawfulness or not. This is about. Uh, ensuring trust with our community and ensuring properly informed decisions are being made. There would be, I, I've been on council like a long time and 
there's never been a need for something like this to come up because in many organisations, you'll note I'm speaking of organisations, Madam Mayor, not council, in organisations there is a spirit of cooperation that, that applies, that people do apply the principles without being forced to do so. I would think that this, uh, this proposal that I have here would be absolutely in the interest of the Chief Executive Officer to ensure that we are covered across all uh, areas in our Code of Meeting practice regarding uh, decisions being, significant financial decisions being made without being informed. I received no information, that's for sure. Uh, so it's about the, the spirit operating and organisations can run on no principles at all, no rules at all. If everybody is there actually to do the best for the organisation, we are not there for ourselves, we're there for the organisation. And this proposal, I believe, is in the interests of the organisation based on an example that has been brought up to ensure that we do not have um, uninformed decisions being made that the community is not aware of and that uh, make significant allocations without that information. I, re I recommend this motion to my, to my colleagues for the, the reason that the question has come up, that it is a gap in the code of meeting practice and that it needs to be fulfilled. And if I was to guess, I would suggest that it was uh, a, a belief of the Chief Executive Officer and others in Council that this needs to go through. I, I recommend this motion to my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Interman. I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Councillor Lipovac. Thank you. Councillor Lipovac, Edwards, Shepherd, and Interman, those against? Myself, Councillor Roberts, Maltman and Slade. Um, the motion is lost. Thank you. We'll move on now to item 1011. Report of the Audit Risk and Improvement Committee meeting held 7th of March 2024. Councillor Shepherd, do you yes, move? Yes, happy to move. Seconder, Councillor Roberts, thank you. Yes, uh, look, I've only brought this out of the block, uh, noting that this is very important and relevant for the community to read, but um, you know, it does take some level of engagement. main reason I've brought it out is to uh, reiterate my interest in uh, an AI policy for council that, that applies to councillors as much as anyone else. Uh, and uh, my um, foreshadowing my intent to pursue that further also. Uh, and uh, I commend this item to my colleagues. Thank you. Any discussion, Councillor Roberts? Any other discussion, Councillors? Councillor Interman? No, just in favour. Thank you. I'll put it to the vote then. All those in favour? Yes. Thank you. I'll declare that unanimous. Moving on now to item 1013, Councillor Lipovac. Thank you, Matt. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do have an alternate motion to put forward. Thank you. And I shall read it out. That Council, one, uh, note the information provided in this report. Two, request that a report be presented to the April 2024 Ordinary Council meeting that summarises Council's commitment to supporting local business through their tendering and purchasing process during the previous 12 months. And point three, note that a future report will be presented annually to the October Ordinary Council meeting commencing this October 2024 that details Council's commitment to supporting local business through its tendering and purchasing process during the previous financial year. Thank you, Councillor Lipovac. I'm happy to support you in that. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Now, in putting forward this uh, amendment and following a discussion with Director Henschke, uh, I do note the uh, preferred option to change the annual report month from March to October, which will enable a more comprehensive and accurate analysis of local supplier data, which enhances the quality of the process moving forward. Thank you, Director Henschke. And I know you're under the pump. I know your department has a lot to do over the next few months leading to the new financial year. So again, I really appreciate um, that we can that we have workshop this over the last couple of days to try and get it over the line. Uh, the councillor briefing we had in November uh, was both positive and productive, with staff supporting the ongoing commitment to give local firms greater opportunity to do business with council. Uh, when I first put forward this notice of motion in March 2022, and again in March 2023, it was because of the feedback I received from the local business community. They wanted to ensure consideration in the tendering process to potentially gain a contract, especially following the financial impact of the COVID period and the slowdown of the economy in recent times. And it just makes sense, as we've mentioned this before in previous years, the more money 
we as a council put back into local business, the more they pump back into our LGA through jobs and sponsorships and donations, etc. Local firms just want a fair go. And I wanted, wanted to remind council of its obligations to support as often as possible uh, local. And no doubt, a quick question uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Slade. Uh, no doubt you would like to see local businesses and firms given every opportunity to um, apply for council contracts. Thank you very much, Councillor Slade. It has been 12 months since the last report, uh, which is why I'm asking for a summary to be presented next month. Uh, before we, re we revert to locking in a comprehensive annual report in October. Um, I'll also add too that should councillors support this motion, then I'll be more than happy to withdraw item 1014 as it will no longer be required. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I uh, thank you for that, Councillor Vivac. And as a seconder to this, I absolutely agree with everything that you said. Um, I am a huge supporter of business in our region. Um, my husband says I support business a little too much because um, I do like to go into the retailer's shops and um, support them at the till. Um, we should absolutely, uh, wherever possible, be sending a message of support to our businesses. I certainly um, I do that on a regular basis. I do it through various mediums, through my Facebook and through my chats with um, Strawny on radio. And, um, you know, I think that as part of economic development, um, it's inherent that council doesn't get in the way with the red and the green tape as well. Um, you know, we need to foster really good relationships with all our businesses. It is tough out there ec economically. The slowdown of the economy, uh, Councillor Lipovac, as, as you have identified, and here we are today. We're, we're in the beautiful uh, Warhope region and um, Warhope itself is going through some really, really tough times. There's been some, um, there's been some hard decisions that have been made by a major employer in the area and, um, and, and we're supportive of, um, you know, uh, of them and the difficulty that they're going through and our thoughts are with all businesses um, that are doing their best just to keep their doors open for um, the community. So happy to support this and, and agree with Councillor Slate. Absolutely, all local businesses should have the opportunity to do business with um, Port Macquarie Hastings Council. So is there any other discussion on this, Councillor Shepherd? Yeah, just briefly, uh, I think um, we really need to uh, commend the staff who have been doing uh, the work on this for an extended period of time. That um, workshop that we had in November really showed that it's not just about um, using the local procurement and, and tendering to um, support local business. It's actually actively supporting local businesses and industry to be able to service council in the future. And, and, and there's all sorts of um, strengths coming from the economic development, the, the input of money into our community. But it also helps council build our resilience to the broader, um, uh, you know, broader instabilities outside our region as well. If we can supply our own needs from within the region, so commend staff for really. Um, running with that. I also want to commend um, Councillor Lipovac for repeatedly bringing this um, item back and making sure staff were, were fully aware of that endorsement from Council to go down that route that they're going. And also just want to briefly uh, acknowledge the role of former Councillor Griffiths, um, whose, whose comments in relation to making sure we don't overlook excellent local providers because they are not excellent at writing tenders. Um, and going through those processes. And, and I have seen in, in my own reviewing of some of the, the, um, the tender applications that, that, that have come through over time, that that has made an input and uh, has made an impact. And so um, this is moving in a really positive direction and um, that, thank you for bringing the item again and thank you for the staff work on this matter. Thank you. Any other discussion? Right of reply, Councillor Lipsack? No, we'll put the motion to vote then. All those in favour? Myself, yes, Councillor Rob Yeah, myself, Councillor Roberts, Smaltman, Slade, Lipovac, Shepherd and Interman noting that um, we've just had Councillor Edwards leave the room momentarily. So I will declare that carried. I also note item 1014 through your direction, Councillor Lipovac, we've already addressed it, so that has now been withdrawn. So we'll move on to item number 11.2 um, and I will move this. 
which is uh, that Council 1 seek feedback from the Local Emergency Management Committee, the LEMC, regarding the benefits or otherwise relating to potential introduction of an emergency signage coding system to improve emergency responses, and two, upon uh, receipt of the feedback from the LEMC, request the Chief Executive Officer to write to the New South Wales Ministers for Emergency Services and Resilience requesting consideration of a statewide emergency response signage coding system to improve emergency responses similar to the systems implemented in Victoria and Western Australia. Could I have someone second? Thank you, Councillor Roberts. Um, so, uh, for those that may be wondering, you know, what this is all about, um, uh, this uh, hasn't come from me. This has come from a member of our community, um, and many of us will remember the story, the horrific story of Tony Begg, 44 years old, surfer in our region. We're a coastal region, and lots of people love to surf. Um, Tony Begg survived um, what can only be described as a, a, a horrific, um, terrifying um, shark attack by a 12 foot long great white shark. And he, he suffered um, extensive injuries through multiple bites. Um, he, he lost his leg and this was after his foot was actually ripped off um, during the shark attack, uh, shark attack, it was ripped off at the ankle, and and as a result of that, you know, um, obviously there's a lot of trauma. Um, but from that, and during his recovery, and I, I and I, I, on behalf of council, all of us here, we wish you really well in in your ongoing recovery and um, your future, Toby. Um, he, he came to the office of mayor and requested that as a council that we look at this. But it's much bigger than just us in local government. Much, much bigger. And, and this really does need to be addressed um, through, through the state government. We, we're an island, Australia, and um, in New South Wales, um, we have such an expansive coastline. And out, um, you know, in the depths, in their territory are, are sharks and um, you know and not just for shark attack but for for any injury or or emergencies that may occur um, you know out, out in the out in the ocean so Toby in in his um, in his recovery has I guess made it his mission to ensure that um, you know that responses during an emergency are swift which gives people the best chance of survival. Now that wasn't the case for a young man called, um, called Zach Young. And he was young, he was 19 years old. And Zach Young um, was on a you know, surfing trip of a lifetime. He had his life ahead of him and he stopped into Coffs Harbour for a surf and uh, he was attacked by a tiger shark and, um, and unfortunately he died of his injuries. So uh, this request um, I'm submitting on behalf of you, Toby Begg, and um, I certainly hope all councillors will, will support this and that we will um, push forward as a coastal community to the ministers of New South Wales to ensure that uh, this emergency response signage coding system um, is right up and down our New South Wales coastline. So thank you, and if there's any other discussion on this, I'd be happy to hear it. We don't have any, so I will put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? <coughs> Councillor Interman? Do we have Councillor Interman? It's unanimous. Sorry, in favour. Thank you. So it's unanimous. I'll declare that carried. Thank you, councillors. All right, so we'll move on to item number 11.03, uh, question with notice, community energy upgrade, which is yours, Councillor Edwards, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor, and you'll note that there's a, uh, an amendment or an alternate. If you'd like to read it, and then I'll take the seconder. Okay, thank you. Oh, wrong side. <laughs> okay, so 11.03 uh, is that Council request the Chief Executive Officer provide an update by way of written report to Council no later than May 2024, Ordinary Council meeting on the progress being made to determine suitable council owned land and asset sites that could accommodate renewable energy projects such as battery storage and or mid scale solar projects which could be pursued utilising current grant opportunities. Thank you. Seconder? 
Councillor Lippe back. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you'll note the difference, um, the change that's been made from what was in the agenda originally. Um, through our process that we, we undertake as councillors before a meeting, we have uh, questions and answers uh, with staff and, and that led to me um, wishing to, to change this and simply seek an update rather than a site specific, uh, uh, I suppose, answer. So I'll still go ahead with my comments um, because it's still relevant and I note we had a, um, a community member here um, in support of uh, generally moving in this direction um, today who addressed us at the public forum. So my comments, comments are that there are at least 10 existing examples of local, local governments securing battery story, storage for energy use and cost savings on their assets. These include Narrabri, Shoalhaven, Sunshine Coast and even Goulburn, which is Angus Taylor's electorate. Local government investment in batteries has proven popular because it saves ratepayers money. Building batteries to service council assets provides the opportunity to capture energy produced at peak supply to then be used later when the electricity would be more uh, expensive, would otherwise be more expensive. Beyond saving ratepayers money in the long run, additional benefits of batteries servicing council assets includes reducing load on the grid during peak production times, reducing waste of energy resources, reducing council's emissions, and meaningful progress towards um, Port Macquarie Hastings Council's existing renewable energy target of 100% renewable by 2027. So this uh, report, this um, um, the wording here that's seeking an update uh, is simply something that's already been set in train back in December uh, 2022 uh, was when uh, that request for an update um, was first um, resolved on. And so we got an initial report in the March 2023, which suggested there was more to do. And so this is simply seeking where are we up to now? Okay, thank you, Councillor Lupe. Back to you, wish to speak to this? Just briefly, Madam Mayor, and I guess a question through you to Director Henschke. Um, with Councillor Edwards' last question, where are we up to now at this point in time in terms of locating suitable sites in our LGA? Through you, Madam CEO, um, we are due to have a council briefing on the um, strategic property review on the 2nd of May, so we can include in that um, an aspect of, around whether there are any suitable suitable land holdings that, 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 that could be used. Um, we'll include that in, in, in that review. Um, the main purpose of that review is really just to look at the priority properties that we, we, have, we, we will focus on, but we can extend that to, to consider um, whether there are any civil land holdings. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Right of reply, Councillor Edwards. Uh, uh, I'd like to make a comment, please. Yes, Councillor Interman. I support this and uh, I'm sorry, uh, Director Henschke, I could not hear what you were saying. So if you give me if I say anything out of place there. Um, I absolutely support this This going forward. This We've been trying to get this on the agenda for a number of years and it just seems to be reluctance on the part of, of the staff to proceed with this. I understand that you have many priorities to deal with, but nevertheless, it seems to me that if we don't get on this soon, we are going to miss the boat in terms of the funding that is currently available. This has been identified for a number of years and it, it really is time that we turned up this and actually do something on it up as we are going to miss the boat on, on grant. Um, grant opportunities. I support this much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right of reply. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. And on the back of um, that, thank you, Councillor Intiman, for, for reminding me of a couple of points to, to make here. Um, yes, initially, um, my interest in, in, in pursuing this was, in actual fact, to make sure we were uh, ready to capitalise on um, those fundings, those grant fundings that were coming from other levels of government. And, you know, this council um, actually resolved in March 2022 here in Warhope um, to support um, this, the ALGA, the Association of Local, Gov the Local Government Association, to, um, 
to call on the federal government for a range of different funding sources and including um, a climate fund to which the federal government's response has been this community energy upgrades fund and so uh, you know, the idea was to make sure we were ready um, to roll and so we're, you know, we're going to see more and more of this. I know the state government has had some, it was mentioned earlier today at the public forum that the state government has had some rounds of grant funding for battery um, in particular for um, council sites and one would hope that they would, the stars would align and we'd have the federal uh, funding and a state um, funding stream that could then be um, put together. Um, it is only a 50% um, contribution from the federal government in this one, but it can be met by um, grant funding from other level of government. So uh, yes, we need to be um, prepared, we need to be ready, that's why I'd like to hear um, the update of where we're up to so we can keep looking at these grants on the horizon and um, capitalise on them to get the best outcomes for our community and for our bottom line, for, our, for the rate payer dollar. Thank you, uh, Councillor Edwards. I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Myself, uh, Councillor Interman, yes. Well, it's unanimous then. I'll declare that carried. Thank you. We'll move now on to item 11.04. Councillor Lipovac um, recommended items from the February 2024 meeting of the Port Macquarie Hastings Sporting Fund. Thank you, Madam Mayor. If I can just summarise that recommendation, that Council endorsed the committee's awarding of funding of $750 each to Lane Jordan, under 16 cricket, Taj McIntosh, under 18 hockey, and Bear Farmer, under 13 hockey, all involved in national championship events. Uh, naturally, speaking in support of the recommendation, all very worthy recipients. Thank you. Um, I'll just get a second now, if that's OK. Sure. Thank you. Someone second, Council Shepherd. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, also an appropriate time to mention, considering that we are at the Warhope Country Club, uh, the same venue the committee, uh, the Sporting Fund subcommittee held its most recent fundraiser three weeks ago for Golf Day, raising more than $8,800. Um, over my dozen or so years on the subcommittee, I don't recall this figure ever being reached previously. Uh, in comparison, because you know I love facts and figures, uh, we raised $4,650 in 2019, $3,500 in 2018. An extremely rewarding day and an exceptional team effort from the committee members enabled with the assistance of council staff under the guidance of Director Watkins. Honoured to have on the day Uncle Bill O'Brien and local MP Michael Kemp join us. Uh, there was, despite the tough economic conditions, there was enormous support from local businesses either competing on the day and or via sponsorship or through the generous donation of prizes, food and refreshments. And the day topped off uh, with a hole in one from club member Lindy Ooh. Shakespeare, which caused a lot of delight out there on wow. the greens. Um, in saying that, it was a great day in summary. Um, probably much hotter and very humid as compared to today, but um, it was a, a very good event and uh, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Any other discussion, councillors? Uh, just to thank the, 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 the congratulating Lindy, but uh, to thank the committee members and uh, Councillor Lipovac for, for that service in making those events happen. Thank you. I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Councillor Inter. In favour. Thank you. I'll declare that unanimously carried. We'll move now on to item 12.01, rescission motion, payment of water fund and sewer fund dividend for the year 2022, item 10.13 of the February 2024 council meeting. Someone to move, Councillor Shepherd. Thank you. Uh, I don't feel the need to read the whole uh, rescission out, but just the clause that would change. That's okay. Considering that it was uh, supported by others, I'll just get one of them to uh, second. Thank you. Councillor Lippervac. Thank you. So the recommendation being that the undermentioned motion adopted at the ordinary council meeting held on the 15th of February 2024, and I'm only, I'm only going to read out clause 6. Um, note that once the information uh, uh, that council resolved that note that once the information and provision requirements in section 4.4 of the guidelines is finalised, apply the dividends as noted in point 2, 3, 4 and 5 to first hold in reserve the amount required to pay out the loan associated with the town centre master plan with any residual amount being the subject of a future report to council before further allocation. And that the new clause that all of the other clauses would remain the same, that that clause would be rescinded, and that the new clause be that note uh, 
that once the information provision requirements in section 4.4 of the guidelines is finalised, a separate report will be provided to council outlining the proposed expenditure of the dividend. Thank you. Can I speak to that? So, you know, this, this topic has come up now a number of times during, during the meeting. So, in summary, uh, in February 2024 Council meeting, uh, we did, unexpectedly to me anyway, uh, resolve to allocate approximately $1.2 million uh, before relevant information was provided to Council to inform this decision. Now, I found this highly unusual and irregular and gave the appearance absolutely that the relevant financial and other implications could not have been reasonably taken into account when allocating that $1.2 million. Uh, we had not received the information, so how could we? If this uh, rescission is successfully carried uh, and the subsequent proposed motion is resolved successfully, what that would do is enable the financial and other implications to be fully considered by Council before directing how those $1.2 million should be, um, uh, should be directed. In, in greater detail, I want to acknowledge that back in December 2022, um, the decision was made effectively for the, the town centre master plan loans that were, were used to help um, with the upgrades and capital works for the town centre uh, master plan area of the Port Macquarie CBD. The decision was substantially made that those would be paid back over the course until 2027 um, by the TCMP rate payers. That, 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 that would be paid by them. In February, um, what we saw was an unremarkable report irrelevant to the TCMP loan was bought. It was the payment of water fund and sewer fund dividends and it's typically procedural. It was recommended that a future report would provide advice to councillors on how best to allocate the approximately $2 million of combined dividends including the potential to reinvest back into water supply and sewer funds. However, Council instead, with the proposal made on the floor, it was legal and not in contravention of the Code of Conduct, um, we decided to direct $1.2 million of public, public money uh, with the casting vote. So it was highly irregular and unusual to my view um, because the proposal was made without notice to at least four councillors on the floor of the council meeting. No information was provided to councillors fr um, from the proposing <coughs> councillor or, or staff. Um, and so the decision was made before any of that information was available. Uh, notably, amendments, amendments that would have had the effect that councillors would first receive information before making a decision to direct that $1.2 million to pay off the... Um, the, the TCMP loan, amendments were voted down with, with the Mayor's casting vote that we would first receive that information before making that decision. My brief cost-benefit analysis is that the benefit of allocating the TCMP loan is um, received by the TCMP ratepayers alone, that they are relieved of approximately $1.2 million worth of loan obligations that would be otherwise paid off by 2027. The cost of allocating those dividends to pay that loan is $1.2 million, which is no longer available for other one-off expenditure for our, uh, the benefit of our broader community or specific projects within the community. Um, I've got further um, comments in my notes, and Madam Mayor, I appreciate the extended time that you've just provided me just now, and so I'll stop there. Um, but I, I welcome questions and I welcome further for the reasons and information, um, noting that one of the principles for us to follow in good decision making is also about st stating clearly our reasons so that people can assess um, the, the veracity, the fairness of those reasons um, for the expenditure of significant funds in particular ways. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Councillor Lipperback, do you wish to speak to it? Madam Mayor, can we ask if Councillor Hinsman has any thoughts on this particular item before I no, oh, happy to defer to you, Councillor Lipperback. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll take the opportunity. <clears throat> and I'll be brief because I think we have covered the information quite uh, substantially in this meeting uh, on various matters. So speaking in support, uh, in relation to allowing that original recommendation to proceed at the February meeting, I'd like everyone to just consider this. Were we not setting a precedent where any councillor can nominate a dollar amount to be removed from one bucket of council revenue into paying off an unrelated expense. And that expense being the TCMP loan that already had a plan in place to have it paid off. 
It's a precedent that turns us back on democratic decision making in my opinion, but by not consulting with all councillors prior to the meeting, by doing something unexpected and out of left field, uh, by not seeking or considering staff feedback on the matter, and if there was, certainly information I did not receive at any time, and I think that's true for other councillors as well. And also by ignoring a previous resolution of council that had determined a sensible approach to dealing with that TCMP loan. So all we're asking with this motion is to please stop and consider that should that we should in fact be provided with further details to allow us to make an informed and democratic decision as we do with 99% of the stuff we get. Rather than just having to accept how and where $1.2 million in public money will be spent, I urge my fellow councillors to support this motion, show ratepayers that we can follow the correct processes in place and that they can trust councillors to do the right thing for the benefit of the greater community. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Lippovac. Um, I'd just like to foreshadow a motion, thank you. Foreshadow oh, into a yeah. order. Okay. Madam Mayor, this is a rescission motion. So we're rescinding it. You are, you are correct. I'm thinking we're just talking about a motion here. Thank you very much. All right, any other discussion on this? Um, um, uh, well, sorry, are you going to take there's you? There's no other discussion. I, I just want to wade in before please, we, please. we wrap it up. Councillor Interman. Uh, thank you. Um, and thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Shepherd and Councillor Lipovac for your comments, on which I thoroughly agree with. And I just want to underline the importance here. It is an, an unfortunate precedent being set here. And we are to make decisions on the expenditure of public funds uh, in an informed manner and with proper process. This is an, a redirection of funds, uh, an expense from the, the levy payments that council currently has in hand. The expense is now being transferred, would be transferred under the motion we're trying to rescind. That public funds pay for what was essentially a private burden that was uh, that was um, imposed on a certain sector of the community for their benefit. They have received that benefit and now by virtue of uh, the decision we are trying to rescind, that money would then accrue to uh, indirectly to those parties affected in the CBD. This is highly irregular. And yes, council could make that decision, but we need to make it with proper information and not on the floor of council with what I am gathering here is advice from staff that was not shared with other councillors. This is highly irregular against all of our principles and I support the rescission motion so that we can go back to the staff recommendation and make this in a sober manner in view of all of Council's uh, commitments and options for uh, spending this $1.2 million of public funds. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Interman. Councillor Edwards. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'll, I'll um, weigh into this um, to support um, this rescission because uh, I think it's quite clear that the proper process wasn't followed. and. And I myself um, reflecting on the year before when that sewer water dividend uh, came came to uh, council with a recommendation, uh, I was eager to see staff's recommendation for it and it looked like they needed a little bit more time. I'd just like to clarify a question I asked earlier, I think, on this item um, did reveal that other than being um, legal to put a um, notice of motion or an amendment uh, on the floor, I don't believe other advice was provided. Uh, from the question I asked. So um, supporting this rescission, we need to get back to proper process and we need to hear from staff on the best use of those funds, whether it is to keep it in that fund, whether it is to uh, accelerate our transformation program, very important things. We need the expert advice. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. And um, we're correct. This is a rescission. Thinking that it was a motion, I would have... Um, I would have foreshadowed the information requested through you, Madam CEO, just in relation to the history of this loan, how it came about, because it seems quite op opaque. We don't seem to actually 
know except for the information that's been provided by those who actually um, are levied to hold the burden of paying this loan back. So I'm very eager to actually through you, Madam CEO, to understand um, exactly the history well before your time, well before mine and, and, and many of the staff here today. Um, Councillor Interman talks about the burden for a private benefit. Th these were upgrades and, and um, maintenance for our town square and our town green. How is this a private benefit when our tourists enjoy this area um, and uh, you know other businesses that don't contribute their visitors enjoy this area, motels and, and hotels and restaurants and bars that aren't within the square of the TCMP levy, they all benefit from it. If you live out here at Warhope and you go and sit on the town green and have fish and chips, you benefit from it. It, it, it is a community benefit, yet just a small group of ratepayers have held the burden for 30 years. This has been done to death. This conversation has been done to death over the TCMP during this term. And in the previous term, for those that served on council with me, we talked about the TCMP back then. The thing is, this loan needs to be paid off eventually. And this is a good use of public funds to be able to have the opportunity to pay off a loan with the dividend that we're receiving through the water and sewer fund and the, the 130 odd thousand dollars in surplus going into the general fund to decide what benefit the community will derive from that. This is our responsibility as elected. Our community elects us to make decisions to do with all matters of community. Public funds is a matter of community as well, and this is what we're elected to do. We, we consult with staff, but ultimately we are the decision makers. And if the decisions are legal, then there is absolutely no issue with the decisions that are being made. So with that, I'll hand back to you. Yes, thank you, Madam. I'll just have a couple of questions off the back of that. Yes. Um, I suppose the first one is um, is for you, because I'm I picture the arrangement with the um, TCMP to be a little bit like a strata arrangement. Do you, are you um, aware of um, what a strata arrangement entails? That if there's a building that um, everybody who owns an apartment in that building um, are, are obligated for whatever the majority want to do to that building? This is not a strata arrangement. I'm just asking if you're aware of strata arrangements. I'm very aware okay. of strata arrangement. This is not a strata okay. arrangement. In, my, in your opinion. Um, uh, next question through you, Madam Mayor, to Director Henschke. Um, on the back of what, um, Madam Mayor's comments, um, is this the very best loan that Port and Crow Hastings Council could be paying down right now? Uh, through you, Madam CEO, um, we have many loans, as you are aware. Um, I'd have to take that on notice to review the, the loan portfolio. Thank you. Um, Director Henschke, off the back of the comment, uh, or rather the question to me about a strata arrangement, is the TCMP a strata arrangement? Uh, through you, Madam CEO, um, no. Thank you. <laughs> okay, any, any other discussion on this? Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll take the opportunity to clarify a few points. Um, to be clear, the history on the TCMP is not opaque. Um, there's a very, very thorough report back from December 2022 where community members are able to have a look and see what was the outcome of extensive uh, review, independent review, extensive and expensive, I would say, independent review and community engagement, including with um, the TCMP uh, landowners and businesses. So I'd like to make that clear. The history isn't opaque in my view around that. 
Um, I'd also like to make it clear that back at that stage when Council made the decision that effectively meant that uh, the TCMP ratepayers would, would be responsible for paying off the TCMP loan, that decision was made by a nine-person council when we had nine, nine people here. And I'd like to note that um, former Councillor Griffiths, um, we've done, done the analysis and 65% of the time she voted in alignment with Team Pence and Councillors. And on this case, she did not. She, like, like others in the council, considered matters like equity, fairness, those other principles as a part of our, um, our agenda, uh, as, as a part of our code of meeting practice. Uh, we know that if something's lawful and it's not a breach of a specific clause of the code of conduct or the code of meeting practice, that it can, it can get through. It's, it's allowable, it's permissible. But think of the meeting principles that are in some of those same documents. Transparent, decisions are made in a way that's open and accountable. Informed, decisions are made based on relevant quality information. Tra Look, I, I can go on, but it's, but it's all there. So uh, when, um, when we come back to that question or the point that the Mayor raised that this needs to be paid off, the question is by whom? Previously, uh, the, those TCMP loans were being paid off by the TCMP ratepayers through to 2027. By allocating the dividend to pay off the TCMP loan, we effectively removed their responsibility and placed it on everyone else. We effectively removed $1.2 million worth of rate revenue that we would have, would have received over the next, uh, the next three years. And we, would have, and, we, and we did that without any advice whatsoever about the financial implications, the considerations as to whether we would be better off allocating that money towards a loan with a higher interest rate. Things of this nature. And that, that, those, those questions remain uh, unanswered. But the question that we, the, the, the question where the answer we do know is who will pay off this loan if this rescission isn't successful? And that is the broader community. Thank you. With that, I'll put it to the vote then, all those in favour of the rescission. Councillor Lipperback, Edwards, Shepherd. Interman. Thank you. Those against? Myself, Councillor Roberts, Maltman and Slate. And the rescission has been lost. Thank you. We we'll now move on to item number 13.01, which is a notice of motion for ferry service operations response from the Minister for Regional Transport and Roads. And I will move it uh, that Council 1 note the response received from the Honourable Jenny Atchison, MP, Minister for Regional Transport and Roads regarding the operation of the two vehicle ferries over the Hastings River and Council's request for the New South Wales Government to take over the operation of the service or provide funding support. To note this decision of the New South Wales Government will result in Port Macquarie Hastings Council continuing to fund ferry services across the Hastings River whilst most other vehicle ferry services in New South Wales are provided by the New South Wales Government or receive funding support. Someone to second, please. Second by Council Mortman. Thank you. Um, okay, so this is... This was a really disappointing piece of correspondence that our CEO received. And it was so disappointing, I felt it needed to come into Council um, and it needed to be on, on the public record for our community. Um, we have a very um, active and vocal community of the North Shore and the ferry is, uh, you know, of huge, huge concern to them over there because when it's slipped or if it breaks down, it really affects their lives, their livelihood and, you know, for, for some with medical issues, it's a, a, such a worry for them over there um, of getting, you know, emergency services over by, by a ferry. We've advocated hard, both verbally, to the Minister, um, to the Member for Port Macquarie. The Member for Port Macquarie has advocated to the Minister, um, just on behalf of our residents over on the North Shore, about the services that we have that are a burden to our ratepayers um, in the Port Macquarie Hastings region. What's really disappointing is that there are nine other council areas that are serviced 
uh, through Transport for New South Wales by the taxpayer dollar. And, and those are uh, uh, Barara Waters Ferry, Lawrence Ferry, Mortlake Ferry, Sackville Ferry, Spiwa Ferry, Almara Ferry, Webbs Creek Ferry, Wiseman's Ferry and Weimar Ferry. Um, and, you know, play on words, why ma? Well, why not Port Macquarie Hastings Ferry? Why not the two ferry services over the Hastings River uh, that we have? Um, in addition to that, it's also noted that the New South Wales Government committed funding support of $500,000 per year for the Lower Portland Ferry, which is co-operated by the Hillshire Council and the Hawkesbury City Council, $500,000 a year for four years, and that happened in 2020. So that's just coming up this year, um, that, that the end to that funding. Um, and, and on top of those other nine ferries that operate, those ferry services are free. They are free to anyone that travels and uses those ferries. So not only is it a burden to our ratepayers, but it's a double dip to the people of the North Shore because they, they pay uh, to travel on the ferries and they also pay um, through their rates as well. So they are, that, they are being um, disadvantaged twice over, in my opinion. I really think um, this message needs to be sent um, of disappointment, needs to be sent via our community um, and their advocacy at the North Shore uh, to let the New South Wales State Government know how very disappointed we are that we are not receiving the same support as nine other uh, local government areas are receiving and I, and I hope um, that we talk to our North Shore community as elected, um, elected uh, officials and have them go through the State Government through their member and, and ask that pressure be put on um, reassessing this down the track. So I'll uh, hand over to Councillor Mortman if you wish to add to that. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I confer with everything you've just said, I'm probably going to repeat quite a few. It's a really disappointing response. And there certainly appears to be clear inequity with the provision of uh, vehicular ferry services across New South mm -hmm. Wales. This motion notes the response received from the Honourable Jenny Atchison MP, Minister for Regional Transport and Roads regarding the operation of the two vehicular ferries over the Hastings River and Council's request for the New South Wales Government to take over the operation of the service or provide funding support. The Minister response states, I have considered your request carefully and given the current financial position of the government and financial commitments to be fulfilled, we are not in a position to take on the operation and maintenance of the Port Macquarie ferry services. Noting that most other vehicle ferry services in New South Wales are provided by the New South Wales government or receive funding support, in my opinion, this response suggests support is only available to some New South Wales councils, just not Port Macquarie Hastings Council. In my opinion, the New South Wales State Government has set a precedent in providing committed funding support of 500,000 per year to the Lower Portland Ferry, operating in the Hillshire Council and Hawkesbury Shire City Council for a period of four years from 2020. I'd personally like to thank Mayor Pinson, Councillor Roberts, in joining myself and our CEO, Claire Allen, and Director Robert Fish, in provision of really strong advocacy for our community on this issue, particularly those directly impacted, those North Shore residents. I feel this result creates further disadvantage in our regional community and I strongly support our community in continuing advocacy with our local member. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Mortman. Any other discussion on this? Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. We'll go to Councillor Interman to make it easier. Thank you. I'll come Sorry. back to you, Councillor Shepherd. Sorry, Madam Mayor. I actually have a question. Yes. Please. Uh, question is to the CEO. Uh, can I assume that we will continue to advocate, because really this motion is only noting, will we continue to advocate for assistance from New South Wales Government regarding uh, this matter? 
Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, we do intend to go back and say uh, you've said you're not going to fund uh, the maintenance and the ongoing costs, but what about a subsidy? Um, so we will go back uh, on the back of that letter and we will continue to advocate because I think that uh, the residents of the North Shore deserve us to do that. Mm. Thank you. Supplementary question, Madam Mayor? Yes. Um, I note that it seems that the majority of subsidies or the majority of assistance that's come from the state government has been for a period, so a set period of time, which does not um, does not satisfy the needs of any council really. And so it would seem to me that the advocacy that needs to be made for 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 permanent uh, for permanent assistance, bearing in mind these are public roads. Do you have a comment on that, Madam CEO? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, I agree. It is, uh, if you like, a road, um, and it really is their responsibility. And we certainly will be advocating for that as a permanent um, option as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Interman. So, um, Andrew, can Madam Mayor, if you would consider adding a point three, uh, which is to note that uh, Council would continue its advocacy on this matter. Yes, I will. Thank you. If we could do that, Tanya. You're happy to take that in, Councillor Mortman? Yep. So perhaps it should be, um, so sorry, Tanya or whoever's writing, it'll be that Council, one, two, and then three, uh, just continue advocacy on this uh, matter of funding of public uh, ferries that are part of a public road. So, sorry, go back to the beginning of that line. So we need a point three. And then, uh, uh, so it'll be just continue. So that council three, continue advocacy for funding state government, New South Wales government funding, advocacy for New South Wales government funding for ferry services, our, for the, this ferry service, which is a public road. Um, Madam Mayor, I'm happy to, that was just off the top of my head, um, if there's any comment or suggest better suggestion from uh, any councillor and or staff. I might actually look to Director Fish. Uh, connects public roads. Sorry? Which connects public roads. Yeah. yeah. So take out which is a public road, which connects public roads. Thank you, Director Fish. Thank you. On that basis, I'm happy to support this. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you for the point three, Councillor Interman. All right, Councillor Shepherd. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you for the point three. That's in fact uh, where, where I was going with this. And uh, I think the important thing here is yes, absolutely, when it, um, it, it in my view, um, benefits the, the best decisions and governance for, and funding for a community. If we are actively engaging the community to be involved with us, but also our, our various members. So I appreciate that encouragement. Um, for community members to engage with MPs there. Um, but the number three is important because, of course, we do have that continued role as well, and our <coughs> advocacy um, and the information that we can bring into that advocacy, um, regardless of its effectiveness to date, <laughs> um, in terms of getting the result we wanted, um, it's really important. And I, I want to impress uh, one of the points that it was made to us last uh, last meeting in relation to the impacts of pursuing a rate freeze potentially was act actually impacts on our ability to receive funding and, and advocate actively for funding from state and federal bodies. That actually, um, if there is a perception that we seem to be uh, comfortable uh, enough in our financial position to not take up the recommended rate peak, that that detracts from our ability to make a solid financial argument to state and federal governments. So I'd just like us all to keep that in mind as we uh, approach the the uh, OP um, in the next council meeting. Um, but I absolutely am in, in support of this particular uh, this motion before us, particularly with that added uh, clause three. Thank you. I 
Don't need a round of applause. Put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? Councillor Intamin? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Are you in favour? Uh, yes, I'm in favour. Thank you. Thank you. I'll declare that unanimous. We'll move on to item 13.05. Lake Hadai Natural Resource Management Monthly Update Report. Moved by Councillor Mortman, I'll second that. Wish to speak to it? Uh, I, with this item, I note um, the progress of the natural resource management projects and initiatives within the Lake Hadai, Lake Innes, and Hadai Creek waterways and progress on the coastal management plan. Um, I note council staff and the staff um, from DPE or DP, Department of Climate Change, Energy and Environment and Water, have undertaken a detailed review of the draft, uh, the hydrodynamic modelling draft. In my opinion, it's of concern that this hydrodynamic model of Lake Innes, uh, Lake Hadai and Cadai Creek uh, by Royal Haskone DHV um, continues to remain elusive to my council colleagues and Madam Mayor when it was due to council in December 2023. I've said it on a number of occasions, our most important projects aimed at enhancing the health and amenity of Lake Hadai and Lake Innes hinge upon the finalisation of the New South Wales, Wales state mandated coastal management plan. Completion of CMPs places a significant burden on New South Wales uh, local councils, office, often diverting resources from core business of council to meet these obligations. Until essential CMP milestones are met, as required by the New South Wales State Government. Crucial improvements to achieve the health and amenity of the Lake Hadai Lake Innes estuarine system are not able to commence. Therefore, I am thankful that the report continues to evidence projections from Council which indicate that the Lake Hadai and Bonnie Hill CMP may potentially be completed this year. I would like to thank Council staff for continuing to provide this monthly report to our community. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Mottman. I'll, I'll just go on to say, um, Thank you to you, Director Watkins, for what is a, a good report because there are there are small incremental, very, very small incremental movements that are happening around um, Lake Cat Eye, which is well loved as we know. And, um, you know, uh, even with it being closed, um, people were still flocking to it. Even though the water is turning brown, people still like to be around it. Um, I'm really pleased to see that the um, proposed site works for the asbestos remediation are going to happen after the Easter holidays, which is just around the corner. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for the information that is being provided because um, Revive Lake Caddo can go on and they can have a look at what's going on in, in, uh, in, within council. Um, and more importantly, our community can go on and they can review this report if they find it of, of interest, which we, we all find of interest. So thank you for that. Any other discussion, councillors? Uh, yes, I have a question. Well, actually, two questions to Director Watkins, please. Yes. Thank you. Um, my apologies, Director Watkins, for not bringing this up earlier. Um, small details, I think, regarding only regarding the hydrodynamic modelling. I'm very pleased to see it's progressing. I think that's great that you're getting feedback on that from the relevant stakeholders. Um, however, uh, first question, do you have any estimate as to when this might be done? When we, when councillors might get the briefing on the final results? Through you, Madam CEO, we're trying to schedule a briefing as we speak. Um, it's about at the moment of the availability of the of the experts to actually attend. So we're hoping to have something in um, April or May. That would be wonderful. My supplementary question, if I may, Madam Mayor. Yes. Thank you. Um, so I'm looking at page 140, uh, 145, where we talk about um, the hydrodynamic modelling being applying to Lake Innes. Lake Cadai and Cadai Creek. But then I go to page 146, sorry for the shuffling of papers, 146, where in item six uh, regarding the review of the opening strategy, it says um, an extension to the hydrodynamic model project is intended to be undertaken 
with consideration of the hydrodynamic model recommendations and the other recommendations from the uh, affected coastal waterways report. So question is, what is this extension of the hydrodynamic model project that is needed, bearing in mind the existing project seems to cover um, all of the relevant waterways? Madam CEO, the, the extension is to actually look at all scenarios so that we don't have to come back again um, and look at other areas. So it really, while we've got the information and the data at hand, it's a minor increase in the area that we're looking at. So we can cover off on things like um, the, the reversion of the lake, um, the opening or the closings. Because it is an integrated system, it really needs to be considered more holistically. So this was an opportunity we saw to actually get the experts to look at it while we had the um, the matter open. Thank you, that sounds very sensible. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I support this motion, of course. Okay, thank you, Councillor Interman. Any other discussion, Councillors? Road reply, Councillor Maltman. No, put the motion to vote. All those in favour? In favour. Thank you, Councillor Interman. I'll declare that unanimously carried. We'll move on to 1306 Works in Kind Agreement, the Sanctuary 244 Oxley Highway Thrumster. Someone to move. Moved by Councillor Lipperback. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Shepherd. Any discussion on this, Councillors? Councillor Shepherd? No, Councillor Lippa, just to clarify for uh, the people who are listening, um, can we clarify from Director Watkins that this is coming out even though it might not have questions because it's a planning matter? Through Madam CEO, that's correct. Thank you. I have no questions. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Um, and thank you for clarifying that, Councillor Interman, um, the reason for no questions and the reason for it being out. No, actually, sorry, I, I, will, I will speak to this. I, I oh, okay. So, Councillor Shepherd is going to speak to it. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so, I think this is important to, um, to, to speak to just briefly um, because what we're seeing is that works have been um, delivered and we are taking an exception of our usual approach to how, how, how we would deal with that. And so, I just want to emphasise that this is an exception. There's no intent to, to take this path um, in the future and um, that uh, w w uh, works in kind in, in principle are, an, 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 are a good thing for council. We get things done more cheaply, we can get them done more quickly, but it's about making sure that we do it in a really um, considered way. In this instance, um, I do think this is the, the best way to deal with this, noting we're um, taking a different approach moving forward, and so I'm, I'm very happy to support this. Um, on the back of that, I'd also like to, um, through you, Madam Mayor, um, ask, uh, and through you, Madam CEO, um, to Director Watkins, if there's any further remarks that you would want to make based on what I've said or, or uh, anything else in this moment. Thank you, Councillor, and through you, Madam CEO. Um, it, this is unusual. It's a variation to a policy that we've adopted some time ago. Um, this isn't the normal practice that we would be supporting through Council, but it has achieved a practical outcome um, for this particular development, and it has saved the community. So um, in, that, in that respect, I think that it needs to be noted that going forward, we will try and avoid these sorts of variations and make sure that the issues are actually addressed up, up front. Um, but the outcomes here for the community are positive. Okay, thank you. I'll put the motion to the vote then. All those in favour? In favour. Thank you. I'll declare that unanimously carried. Item 13.07, Works in Kind Developer Works Deed Agreement DA 2014-114. Someone to move and someone to second. Moved by Councillor Shepherd. Someone to second. Councillor Lipperback, thank you. Any discussion on this, councillors? Uh, yes, again, just noting this is a step away from the process that we anticipate taking into the future and that um, fundamentally what we're seeing here is a, um, is a, is a public benefit that really justifies um, the, um, the um, exception, exception um, applying here. Um, and so uh, very happy to support this and again emphasising that um, will be um, it, it's not the desired approach into the future and we will be taking an improved approach into the future. Thank you. I'll put the motion to the vote. All those in favour? In favour. Thank you. Um, yep. Sorry, I just didn't see 
Councillor Edwards' hand. Yeah, it's unanimously carried. Sorry, thank you. Um, item 14, confidential matters. Uh, Madam CEO, we've got none. And that brings us to the end of our March meeting here in Warhope at the beautiful Warhope Country Club. Thank you everybody online who participated by staying with us and watching. Thank you to those of you who came out um, physically and sat with us for the last three hours. And um, I now call the meeting closed at 12.54 p.m. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.